versus an unrelenting blitzkrieg of trick technicality in a mountain biking version of Game of Thrones. But that was then, and this is now. At round one in Rotorua, Reader got his revenge. And now, Fresh Blood is looking to step onto the podium. The Triple Crown of Slope Style is on, and the stakes are high in the Crankworx FMBA Slope Style World Championship. The Crankworx Innsbruck Slope Style presented by Kenda starts right now. Yes, Michaela, it is true. It starts right now. And we have that same feeling we get every time it's another stop of the Crankworx FNBA Slope Style World Championships. We only have four of those stops a year. So the hair does the thing it does. It climbs, it stands on its end on our arms because we're so excited for the show, the display of mountain bike expertise that we're about to be privileged to. I'm your host, Cam McCall, alongside my brother, Tyler McCall. And Tyler, stop number two, stop number one was a doozy to say the least. And just a year ago, we saw what we've all been considering the best slope style mountain bike contest in the history of the sport, the history of the discipline. What are we expecting to see out here today? I think it's going to be similar to last year, but last year was kind of a battle between two guys. This year, everybody's on point. Everybody who's here deserves to be here. Everyone's on fire. Practice runs have been insane. I think it's going to be a big show. Well, the course is something that everybody always raves about. We talk about how great the course is in Rotorua, New Zealand for stop number one. We got the same crew who builds this course all the way up here on this northern hemisphere. Tyler, you actually had a chance to go ride the course. Take a look. All right, here we are, Innsbruck, Austria. We got Matt Jones over here, about to drop in on eight features of trickable goodness in the Alps. You ready, Matt? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's give it a run. So the course does not start off easy. We're into this wood, big wood, wooden flat drop, and then the dirt to dirt. This course builder, Tom Hay, loves the dirt to dirt jumps. They're always huge. And now the boner log. No shortage of air time there. And then the kickers really start. We've got the left hip, straight into a right hip. Woo! Little deep, that jumps big. And now the whale tail. Back flip out, that is big. <laughs> The last jump is where the absolute hammers go down. We've got some huge kicker jumps, a massive whale tail, an almighty bone along. Ooh, that course is unreal. Oh, you're dangerous. Cheers, people. Tyler. That is a good course. I'm into that. Right, guys, back to the studio. <laughs> Tyler, that looks like a blast. And a lot of people say this is their favorite course on the circuit, but there's always that debate. Does that mean it's the best course, the best slope style course we've ever seen? What's your opinion on that? Oh, I think it's subjective to what people have at home, what they've been training on, what they're looking for, and what kind of tricks they want to do on what kind of jumps. I think it's the most fun course I've ever ridden. And I was telling people that, and then I thought about it. I'm like, man, those jumps are big. Those landings are tall. I'd be scared to have to do such scary tricks every run. Um, it's so built, it's fun to ride, scary to trick, I would imagine. When it's built perfect, you can ride things that are so big, but get the riders out there doing some of the biggest tricks in the world because the jumps are so perfect. Do you feel like the speeds leading into all the features are spot on? So I was a little nervous following Matt there. That was one of my first runs, and I asked him what the course felt like, how it flowed, and he said, literally, you just drop in and you ride it. The only thing was a whale tail. You kind of have a little more speed than you need, which kind of gives people options for different tricks out of that thing. So other than that, it's just you drop in, ride it, and trust the course builders, Tom Hay, Emerson Wilkin, Elev Elevate Trail Building, always do a great job, and uh, course flow is perfect. Riders seem to be loving it. You're never going to have a great course unless you have great dirt, and we only go to the best places in the world for mountain biking. That's why we're right here in Innsbruck, Austria. And if you're not familiar with where we are, here's a nice little zoomed-in satellite view right in the middle of these gigantic alpine peaks is this city known as Innsbruck. It, they call it the capital of the Alps. We've got a couple bike parks here, and it's so rare to have a gigantic city centered right in between these big mountains. Usually you're in a little village or something like that. So a lot of the riders really enjoying the atmosphere out here, just ramping up the intensity for today. Now, one of the guys we all have our eyes on was a part of that two-person dogfight last year. It was Brett Reeder and Nikolai Rogatkin. So Nikolai, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's talk a bit about last year. It pretty much turned into a two-man battle between you and Reader. You guys were one-upping each other each and every run. Tell us how important it is to have a competitor that pushes you, and does that change your strategy? What does it do to your psyche? 
Yeah, you know what? Having a competitor that pushes you uh, just, you know, makes you be really on your game and, you know, makes you just stomp tricks that uh, you weren't even potentially expecting to do in your run. So, yeah, it's a massive motivator and uh, it puts on a lot of pressure as well because, uh, yeah, having a having a competitor that can uh, that can definitely beat you with uh, with any run that they do is uh, is quite nerve wracking, but it definitely uh, is a huge motivator. And um, you know, it's exactly what the fans want to see a battle like that when uh, two riders are just going back and forth uh, and you know trying to do the best run of the day. So yeah, massive motivator. Exactly. As a fan myself, I'm hoping for some more battles like that today. Um, we love seeing you guys push each other. And now I want to talk a little bit about Rotorua. We all know that when you compete, you're not going for fifth place, you're not going for fourth place, you're going for first. So tell us about your result there. Has it changed your uh, mentality, your training ritual for coming into this event? Yeah, uh, you know what? Um, when you compete, you, you're, you might have goals in your mind, but when it comes down to the run um, and you're on that start ramp, it's kind of just you versus the course um, and you know the first run that i did in rotorua i was super stoked on it was exactly what i wanted and uh yeah i gotta give it to the boys they heavily heavily stepped it up in the uh in the second runs pushing me from second to fifth and uh yeah i had to give it all i had which uh, i'm definitely not opposed to doing i, I love sending it uh 100% what I got, and uh, it didn't work out that time, but uh, I can't complain. I'm still coming into this one with the uh, same mentality and uh, just trying to do the best run I can down the course and uh, hoping the judges enjoy. Exactly, Nikolai. Well, thanks for the insight. Good luck out there. Can't wait to watch it. Thank you, Tyler. Well, the big question now is, will we have deja vu of last year? The two necessary ingredients in that recipe are here on site. We just heard from Nikolai Regakin. Luckily, the third member of our team, Michaela Gatto, is catching up with Brett Reeder. So Brett, um, we've been seeing on Instagram, you posted that you've done a new trick. It seems like you're pushing yourself a lot for this film that you've been working on. Do you think filming is beneficial or detrimental for preparing for a competition like this? Uh, I don't love doing it right up to a contest, but at the same time, you're like, doing tricks when you, you know maybe isn't ideal which simulates a contest uh, so I don't know I mean all in all it's uh, it's it's a positive if I can be filming uh, right where I'm training for contests so totally and um, you had a bit of a slam in practice but you seem to be absolutely dialed now physically and mentally how do you move on from something like that um, yeah that took a toll on me the first uh, day was a, a, a complete rain day. We, we didn't get to ride on our first practice day. Second practice day, I like came into practice feeling so good. Uh, tried my new trick on the flat drop, crashed, came up short, uh, like hurt my wrist. There's no way I was able to ride later that day. And then the following day, which was yesterday, I didn't ride at all, like a couple straight airs. So I'm on my, I'm like two and a half hours into practice right now. So, um, I think at the end of the day, I'm not as prepared as I, I really need to be and want to be for this contest, but um, I've made the decision and I'm, I'm going to compete. I'm going to try to do my best and um, yeah, I, I hope it works because yeah, it's been a bit of a mental um, mental challenge the last couple days. So yeah. Use it as fuel. We'll be watching. For sure. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Well, it's great to hear where Brett's head is right now. And I know that two words that do not exist in his vocabulary are good enough. Even though this guy should feel like he's on top of the world because he won stop number one in Rotorua, you saw that Instagram clip. He's continuously pushing the sport. He landed that flat drop backflip tail up at his home training center just to try to maintain his status as the guy to beat. Let's take a look back at how he won stop number one down in Rotorua, New Zealand. <laughs> The first stop of the Crankworx FMBA Slopestyle World Championship set the bar high for a thrilling season ahead. The main focus in Rotorua, New Zealand was on the Russian-American Nikolai Rogatkin and Canadian Brett Reeder. Spending most of the winter on his bike definitely paid off as Brett laid down a flawless first run. Court 720 on the step down. Stomps it. With a score of 94.25, Reader stated his intention. Brett Reader wow. goes into the lead. A ridiculously high score. Rogakin's first run was solid, 
Oh, what? Wow, a cash roll seat grab. <laughs> but not enough to challenge Reader for the lead. In his second run, Nikolai Rogatkin went for broke. He's gonna bring some crowd pleasers. Wow, a twister. Under rotating his signature 1440 on the Magaza Money Booter, Rogatkin handed the win to a headstrong Brett Reeder. I'm already looking forward to the next one. My mind's already there. I'm already on the start drop in Innsbruck, so yeah, I really hope that I can just do what I need to do and show up there the way I felt here before the contest. Taking the second spot on the podium was Belgium's Thomas Janon. And in third was a newcomer to a Crankworx podium, Italian charger Diego Caverzassi, completing his second run with Rogatkin's signature twister. Missing the podium by less than a point, Thomas Lemoyne secured fourth. Disappointed, Rogatkin had to settle for fifth. The level was raised super high, so I really had to step it up in my, uh, my second run and went 100% all in with the 14-40 in the last trick. You know, you can't expect that to go uh, perfectly sometimes. I, I hit the ground pretty hard as well, so I'm, I'm stoked to be here. And uh, we got a long year ahead of us, so uh, only more to look forward to. So needless to say, Brett Reeder started the season out exactly how he had hoped, taking the win on stop number one. But we got to talk about a guy who we call the king of consistency, Thomas Janon. That guy got second place in Rotorua, so he's looking good for getting those points for the overall title at the end of the year. We're going to tally up those points every single stop. Yeah, it's important to, it's not just a, a race for who's going to win this event, it's a points battle as well, and they want to win that King of Crankworks and, you know, the World Championship. And how about a guy who got on the podium for the first time at stop number one, Diego Caverzasi? So Diego in everyone's mind has always kind of been an underdog but i don't think he's an underdog anymore he's proved that he has what it takes to get on the podium and i think he's going to bring that confidence into this run here and this guy is bringing tricks that not a lot of people have in their bag which is why i took him into consideration when i was building my fantasy crankworks team for slope style take a look at who i chose now i started down at the bottom a new rider only cost me seventy six hundred dollars Eric Fedko. Then I went with Diego Caverzazzi because for $8,700, he had a podium already this year. That's a bargain. And now I'm starting to run out of money, but I still was able to capture the king of consistency, Thomas Janon. But now with only a little bit left, I'm thinking 7100 bucks for Matt Jones. That kid is due for a huge performance, so I'm feeling pretty good about my team. I think that's a good call, man. Realistically, you can't go wrong with any of these riders out here. So you yeah. just got to be straight, uh, smart with your money and how you spend it. I would love to buy a Nikolai Rogakin or a Brett Reeder, but man, I'm going to have to save up for an entire season to be able to put one of those guys on my team. So I'm, I'm feeling the strategy out. Not everyone can drive a Lamborghini, so you got to choose wisely. I'm, all right, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get to my destination. Well, if you're new to slope style, let's take a look at what we have in store for you right now. We have 14 of the best riders in the world. They each get two runs. The best run counts. Who's giving them their scores? We have four judges. They're all very esteemed. They know what they're talking about. There's big money on the line, especially if you win three of the stops, you win an extra $25,000. Of course, 2017, the guy who had the most points after all the rounds was Sweden's Emil Johansson. He took away the overall title. Well, Tyler, I talked about how we have 14 of the best slopestyle mountain bikers on the planet. Who are they? We got Alex Alanko, which I'm pretty excited to see. It wouldn't feel right without a Swede in here. And this is his first crank work, so I'm really excited to see what he's going to bring to the table. So some new faces out there. Alex Alanko, Eric Fedko in his second crank work slopestyle appearance. And then, of course, the last rider to drop is going to be Brett Reeder. Basically reverse order from our current overall rankings, which after only one stop is just the results from the stop number one down in Rotorua, New Zealand. Well, if you love slope style, you came to the right place. Today is slope style Saturday. It's Crankworks Innsbruck slope style presented by Kenda. And if you're sitting on your couch, tuned in your TV, you came to the right spot and do not go away.
Well, it's about that time. The anticipation is slowly building as we stare at the beautiful alpine peaks of Innsbruck, Austria. The second time we've had a Crankworks Festival here. And by the looks of the, tur the crowd turnout, we found the right place. It's stop number two of the Crankworks FMBA Slope Style World Championships. We have the best riders in the world, and it starts right now. This whole week is going to be action packed full of events. It's so unique having a gigantic city in this alpine environment. Nobody has any room for air here. This is where he's going to shine. Pretty naked, naked. He's looking good. She's going to take it. This is unreal. Just sending us to the moon. So sick. What a huge drive. We could have been leading it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best <laughs> ever. Oh, man. Dude, Well, there we have it. The crowd is starting to make noise. And if they're loud now, I can't even imagine the decibel levels we're going to be achieving once we drop our first rider. We're getting a look at him right now. This is a young rider out of Sweden, yet another talented rider to pop onto the scene. Can't stress enough how difficult it is to climb the ranks and make it here to the top of the sport. He's done what he needs to do. He went to some of the smaller level events, got the points he needed, and now he's here. His first Crankworks ever. The only Swede to be here. He said he feels a little bit lonely. He wishes his friends were here, but I'm hoping we get to see his friends, Max and Emil, healthy. But now is the time for him. In order to make it to the top of the sport, right here at Crankworks, there's a smaller series of events. We call them gold events on the FMBA World Tour. This is an event called Swatch Rocket Air in Switzerland. Alex Alonco showed up to this event and absolutely just dropped the hammer, stomping his run. And at these events, if you're a relatively unknown rider and you're the highest finishing rider who isn't already invited to the next Crankworks event, you find yourself right where Alex Alonco has now found himself at the top of the Star Tower at a Crankworks event. Looks like he's getting ready to drop, drop and we're pretty excited for this show to get going here. Now, I met this kid last winter. I was visiting Max Fredriksson in Sweden, and we drove a couple hours to a little tiny indoor park. It's so wintry, the only way you could ride was to go indoor. And here's this long, blonde-haired kid in there doing big tricks on tiny jumps. It's time to see if he can drag those tricks to the gigantic features here on a Crankwork Slope Style course. We saw at Rocket Air that he has what it takes. Let's see if he can do it on the bigger courses. First rider dropping, Alex Alonco. What does he have for us? He's got a truck driver off the start drop. Backflip double bar spin on that big dirt to dirt feature. Coming to the cannon with an opposite 360, spinning in his unnatural direction. Into oh. a triple truck driver. He's getting a lot of Oh, no. Well, Alex Alonco going off course before he could make it to that next hip feature. Tyler, tell me how much harder it is on those two features after the cannon log to do these technical combos. So those jumps are what we call hips, where the takeoff and the landing are offset. So you're either under rotating or over rotating slightly. And sometimes it's hard to calculate exactly how to get it on the money. And everything looked like it was going well. I think he just under rotated a little bit on that and blew his rear tire. Well, let's take a look here. This is the cannon leading into the feature where he had the mistake. Let's see if we can figure out what went wrong. A great opposite 360, and then this happened. Triple truck driver, so a slight over rotation. So that may have been fine on a straight, perfect double, but this is a hip. So maybe he doesn't spend as much time on hips, but he's looking clean in practice. Just a slight miscalculation here. You have to calibrate your trick. Accounting for that angled landing, figure somewhere around the 30 degree hip angle. You have to make sure you don't just do a trick like you would practice in an indoor park on a straight tabletop box jump. So Alex Alonco will make his way back up to the top. Luckily, he has another opportunity to get a top to bottom run here in Innsbruck. Well, take a look at our next rider, Jakob Wenzel, out of the Czech Republic, a guy who has clawed his way back to the top of the sport. He fell off tour last season. He's been in the scene for a lot of years. He's been in, he's been out, but he hasn't given up. 
Now this is a guy, if you follow Crankworks and all the other disciplines we feature here at these festivals, you know him from dual speed and style. Once he was relegated to dual speed and style, losing his place on the World Slope Style Tour, he started to dominate that discipline. But now he feels so happy to be back on this stage. He decided not to compete in dual speed and style, putting all of his efforts for this moment right now in slope style. Well, in practice, I got to say, I've seen, I saw him riding like I've never seen him ride before. It looks like he's hungry. He wants to earn that spot back on tour full time, not just a one and done. And he's been bringing some new tricks based on practice. 360 tuck no hander on the wow. drop. Whoop. Nice 360 table on the dirt to dirt. Here he comes into the cannon log. Look at that, he switched his pedal, didn't he? He did. So double tail up there, coming up a little bit short, see if he can get speed for this. Oh, the 720! 720, able to hold it together. Oh, 360, down side tail up in. <laughs> Backflip down, not much room for air, but he's holding together into oh, a cash flow on yes. the last note. <laughs> Jakob Wenzel out of the Czech Republic. Showing that he deserves to be here. He clawed his way back up to the top of this sport and just dropped a hammer of a run. I'm glad he was able to hold on to that. He was a little squirrely in a couple points. You know, it wasn't the cleanest he's, he was looking for, but he was able to hold on and get one in the bag. And in the end, for a first run, that's kind of what you want to do. Watch these pedals right now. So he switches his stance. That's not necessarily an opposite for him. It's just the way he feels more comfortable doing it. Some riders choose to switch their feet. There, he almost lost his pedals there. His crank spun going up. And man, you do not want to miss your pedals going into that because there's not much time to stop. And here's the last trick, that front cork 720. We call it a cash roll. It's invented by Daniel Dares in the world of BMX. You're seeing mountain bikers throw it on slope style now. Initiating that rotation over his front shoulder rather than the back puts it on that really cool looking axis. Now we're waiting for the score for Jakob Wenzel, our first top to bottom run of the competition. A 67.5 puts him, of course, in the lead right now. So our next rider, as the judges prepare their scorecards, is going to be that man right there, Matt Jones, out of England. Another rider who was on the tour last year, but was having such a hard time stomping a run top to bottom. Matt Jones starting his run. Flat flip. Watch how high this kid goes on everything oh. that he does. And he always has so much style. And it just looks fun when he's on his bike. Now keep in mind that amplitude is definitely something that the judges look for. Also extension. Yeah, you never oh. see his hands halfway out. So a backflip tuck no hander into a 360 oh, tuck no hander. And execution is another thing they're looking for. He's doing exactly what he needs to do right now. Perfectly smooth, right at the top of every landing, no pedals. Come on, Matt Jones. Wow, fully extended backflip suit, man. I'm so happy to see him land a run right now. If you follow slope style mountain biking, you're happy too, because that's only the second top to bottom he's stopped in a Crankworx competition. He crashed in Rotorua in Leger in Innsbruck. He finally landed a run last year in Whistler, and now he's put down a run with some hammers. The amplitude is something that really stood out for me on that run. He's got to be, he's got to be happy about that one. And I was talking to him earlier, and he was saying he's not sure if he should go for points or go for broke. And I think that was a happy medium. That's that's going to be a good scoring run. Well, I heard. Whoa! He even wow. looked at the crowd right there. He's just showing that he's comfortable. He's not stressed fully confident in everything that he's doing. Look at him smiling, just staring at the Alps right there. I learned something about Matt Jones today. I was talking about it to somebody who said they heard he was a straight A student all through school. They said he's a real smart guy. Well, he must have studied the judges' criteria because he ticked all the boxes in this run. Everything was textbook perfect. He wasn't stressing it. He wasn't rushing it. Everything was perfect to pedals, and I think the judges are really going to take note of that. When you have execution like that, you don't need the tricks that he's been struggling with, like the double backflip. There we go. A 79.5 puts Matt Jones currently in the hot seat. Well, now he has a second run to experiment a little bit, having that to fall back on. He's got a base to work off of, so I'm pretty excited to see what he's going to come up with, see if he's going to hang it out a little bit more. He's always got stuff on reserve. Next rider in the gate out of Germany, it's Lukas Knopf. Now we spoke with him at halftime at stop number one. He was an alternate 
but he wasn't able to make it in. All the riders who were on the start list, staying healthy and riding the finals. But he pushed forward, he made it here. Now he's gonna be a part of stop number two. And he's been enjoying every minute he's been spending here in Innsbruck. Take a look. When I drive here from Germany, the mountains suddenly start to grow. Then you end up in like this good sized European city in between the mountains. Here in Innsbruck, we have this skate plaza as well and it suits me pretty good because I grew up actually riding skate parks. And yeah, we basically went there every day from like nine till seven in the evening. And then I started to build my own jumps and then I had this upcoming passion for dirt jump and slope style. Yeah, it's always cool to come back in a skate park and play around a little bit. I think it helps for your overall bike control. For me, it's pretty awesome to finally be officially in the Crankwork series. I mean, it took some time. Now we have 2018. When I started, it was 2014, but I mean, I finally made it here and I hope to throw down a good one. I mean, I would say I'm a friendly German, but Austrians are more friendly for sure. <laughs> I like that every time I come to Austria. Well, he's earned it. It's great to see Lukas Knopf not only enjoying his time here in Innsbruck, but putting those Kenda tires on the start tower of a Crankwork slope style course. This will be his first Crankwork slope style appearance. He's been working his way up the ranks for years. This ain't his first contest though. It's so much work to get here, you know? It's like, it's not like his career is starting right now. Sometimes you only see these guys once they make it here. But I've been following him for a while. I've known that he has what it takes. He was in the booth with us doing interviews last time. And now he's here dropping in for a Crankworks. It all comes down to if you can pull it off when the pressure's on and he looks composed. Big front flip on that dirt oh. to dirt bear. Coming in a little over rotated, but muscling it out. Nice 360, one foot of cannon off the cannon there. Straight into a double tail up on the hip. Truck driver coming up a little short, but he's just gonna try to salvage a run here and make it down. So maybe this isn't quite what he had planned, but he's back on track now. 360, oh. tail up the far spin on the last jump. Great combo to finish things off for Lucas Knopf. Not as smooth of a run as he was hoping for. And we talked about how great the execution was in the run from Matt Jones. The judges love that. When they see you pedaling in between the features, they typically have deductions for that, but all of his tricks were pretty on point, especially that last one. Right, it started to go a little bit wrong here where he got a little bit too much snap on that front flip tuck no hander. That's a big jump. You got a lot of time to rotate, and he went a little over row, so he might have hit his head on his handlebars there, threw him off rhythm a little bit, but he just wanted to salvage a run and get down. Well, it's important to it's important to make sure that if you're going to make a mistake, you just look forward and try to push through. Now, I think that he cased some of these jumps on the right part of the course. Casing means you're coming up a little bit short. You can see his rear tire didn't land exactly where he needed it to. But fortunately, getting into that whale tail feature, you don't need a ton of speed. So he was able to salvage. But that last trick was spot on. So hopefully, he'll be able to get a solid enough score and then fix it up in run number two. Well, it's a 60.5, good enough for third place for Germany's Lukas Knopf. He knows what he needs to improve, but it's great to see him get a top to bottom in the bag. It's good to see him be able to recompose himself and just get a run down and land that banger at the end and get some points. So now he's got something to work on. He knows he's gonna be looking for more in run two. In the world of slope style, a lot of riders look at the other riders to decide how they're going to compose their run. One guy who does the exact opposite is Simon Godziek. Borrowing equally from BMX and motocross, adapting these tricks to the mountain bike, you never know what he's gonna throw. Flat flip, one foot of can off that start job. So that's the biggest trick we've seen there. I love seeing old school Supermans in a slope style run. Truck driver on the hip there. So this is a good chance to link something oh! into a 720, nice and slow, perfectly into the transition. Great control, that rotation. Double tail into the whale tail, risky move there. Oh, stop, 
Just the front flip bar spin to finish things off. Simon Godziak comes out swinging. Clean run, lots of variety. I always say this, but I like that he mixes in a Superman. Not normally a high scoring trick, but the way that he does it, the judges just have to give him points because it looks so darn good. Now Godziak not practicing as much as the other riders this morning because he said he has his run on lock and he's just ready to do it. He was just off the podium last year with a fourth place position. You know he's looking to stand on that box this year. He's always close. He's always got the tricks and sometimes it doesn't all come together, but he looks to be in top form today. Well, third place in Leger last year was his first podium appearance. And if all goes his way, he's doing exactly what he would need to do to get back on there. So this right here, he's doing a cork 720, but the jump's a little bit of a hip. So he's actually doing about a 700 degree rotation, which takes so much air awareness to be able to just subtract 20 degrees from the spin to land perfectly into where the landing is. Smooth on the double tail whip up. Great extension on that backflip tuck, no hander down, but none of this matters if you throw away this front flip bar spin. Could this have been any more smooth? Perfect to two tires, so calm and collected. Simon Godziak awaiting the decision from the judges. Will it be enough to knock Matt Jones out of the hot seat? Matt Jones currently sitting with a 79.5. You're looking at our judges there right now. That's head judge on the left side of your screen, Paul Rack. We have former competitor, Pierre Edward Ferry. Grant Fielder all the way there on the right. Judges who've been there before, been judging for a long time and used to compete in these types of situations so they know exactly what they're looking at. They're taking their time with this score. Needing a 79.5 or better to move into the hot seat. Simon Godzia goes second with a 76.25. Now the third member of our team, Ga Michaela Gatto, is standing by with Simon Godziak. All right, so to me that looked like a run fit for podium, but you were kind of going like this. You didn't look that happy. Where do you want to improve for second run? Uh, I overshot the first drop and uh, couldn't extend my superman pretty well. Then I didn't do a burst spin on a bonnet lock. So I screw a couple jumps in the beginning. Uh, the rest was okay, but it's not enough. I want to improve. All right, well, good luck in round two. Thank you. Well, you can see Simon Godziak is motivated to get back up to the top of the course. These guys are their toughest critics. That looked like a great run to you and I, but he knows he's got some room for improvement, and we're lucky enough to, we're gonna be able to witness that. Exactly, that's the beauty of two runs here, but now we have Eric Fedko. German rider, this is his second Crankworx appearance, and I was a huge fan after watching him ride for the first time in Rotorua. This kid is just so consistent and composed. He's been killing it ever since practice started. Everything's been- Yes! I saw him, oh, oh no. So I saw him feeling that out a few times in practice, never extending it. That time he went for it. There was a 360 seat grab Indian Air. Not sure if he just under-rotated a little bit, maybe slipped a hand. Well, we knew he was gonna be going for that trick because as you said, in practice, he was taking his feet off, touching the seat. We just hadn't seen him extend it yet. And we knew he was gonna be going for the glory here. Here's his 360, he takes his hand off, puts it on the seat, does a Superman seat grab. Indian air means he's crossing his legs in the air. What do you think happened there, Ty? Well, he went full extension on that. He wasn't just feeling it out. He knew he had to go as big as he could. We're gonna get another look here, I think, but it looked like maybe he missed a foot, maybe he was just a little bit off balance. There's not much room for air on a trick like that. You're coming in, your feet are off, swinging around, your hands off, and you're spinning in a circle. There's so many things that have to go right to get back onto the bike. You see Nikolai Ergakin, always a great sportsman, down there making sure that Eric Fedko is okay. And we were talking about Eric Fedko earlier today, saying that he's like, He's, he's like old faithful, he always delivers, he's so consistent, we weren't expecting to see a crash out of him, but that just goes to show what happens when they're saving something for the finals. The extension on that 360 Superman Seagrub Indian Air couldn't have been any better. So the medics checking out Eric Fedko at the moment, but that jump that he tried that trick off of 
It's one of the most interesting jumps on the circuit. We love to see it's taking it back to the old school, a dirt to dirt double, good size. We start out with this flat drop. That's the flat drop that Brett Reeder was attempting that backflip tail whip on. Hopefully we'll see that later. Walk us through the rest of this course, Tyler. So after that big jump, you got to check up a little bit into this cannon here. It's not small either. Nothing on this course is small, but then it sends you into these hips here. We got a left hip into a right hip which is where we're gonna see really good opportunities for back-to-back -back regular and opposite tricks. And we're talking nine meters for both of these hips, so not only are they hipped on an angle, they're around the 30-foot range for those of you who aren't on the metric system. And then you're into this, what we call a whale tail. Risky to do big combos in, because if you miss your footing, there's not much room to stop. And then, this is the best way to finish a slope style run, one gigantic money booter at the end key feature on every course. It's kind of similar to what everyone practices on at home, and that's what you want to end with is your favorite trick, your biggest trick, and what you think you're going to get the biggest score on. Well, it's weird to see that course graphic without all these screaming fans alongside, but it's great to see Eric Fedko standing up. Medic's taking good care of him. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see him make his way back up to the top for a second run. Such a bummer to see. I did not see him make any mistakes in practice. He was just looking so clean and confident. And I saw him do some pretty big moves, and I could tell what he was feeling out. And he had a really good run plan. So I know he's pretty disappointed. He's going to see how he feels. Hopefully, we can get him back on the bike for run number two if he's feeling good. Well, one thing we know about that kid is he's a tough kid. So if anybody can do it, it would be him. Back up to the start tower. Our next rider in the gate looks to be the BMX legend turned slope style top dog, Ryan Nyquist. Always an excitement when he drops into a course, no matter what kind of bike he's on. Ryan Nyquist, the first competition we've seen him riding a fully suspended slope style bike, meaning it has not only front suspension, but rear suspension. Never thought we'd see him on a rear shock, but on features this big, he says he likes to get away with a little bit. Nice big over-rotated 720, which matches perfectly into that hip there. 360 one-handed X up, kind of a Ryan Nyquist signature what? with a 720 into the whale tail. Come on! Such a high-risk maneuver into a double truck out. Come on, Nyquist! Yes! <laughs> Able to muscle through there. That's all those 20-something years of experience to get through that run there. This guy, he is old faithful, always delivering a run, stood on the podium at Red Bull Joyride last August. Never thought he'd be competing in slope style. Now he's one of the best in the world, holding on to his status on the tour. He did exactly what he needed to do right there to move himself up the rankings and move on to all the rest of the rounds for seasons to come if he keeps this up. That right there is kind of something you'll only see him do. A 360 one-handed X up. And this right here, 720 into the whale tail. He did that first day of practice. I asked him about it. He said, you know what? I knew I was going to do it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Didn't think I'd do it first day of practice, but I just had to get it out of my mind, out of the way. Now, some of the top riders in slope style mountain biking are getting close to 20. This guy's getting close to 40, but no slowing down. I was going to say, be careful calling him old faithful. You don't want to make him mad throwing that old word around. <laughs> Young at heart, Ryan Nyquist, always stepping it up. Well, last year he experimented a little bit and he learned what the judges like and what they don't like. He was trying some tricks where he would land with his handlebars backwards. The judges didn't seem to care, so he went back to those tricks that have served him well throughout his BMX career, tricks that put him on the podium last year in Whistler. The big question right now, is he gonna get higher than a 79.5 to knock Matt Jones out of the hot seat? Well, here comes the score for Ryan Nyquist. Watch the bar climb, how high? Third place currently for Ryan Nyquist, the score of 71. Michaela Gatto, let's hear from the man, the myth, the legend himself. Oh, what's up? Um, so you've been competing since 1995 on various hardtail bicycles, BMXs and hardtails. Um, you're on a dually now. Tell me what's up, man. Yeah, just, uh, just for taking the full dive into mountain bike world, you know, I figured I needed a dual suspension just to finish it off. But yeah, Haro made this frame for me, new thread slope, and it's feeling good. I was kind of nervous. I only rode it like three times before this event, so I hadn't really tested it out, but it's feeling good. Happy with that run, happy I didn't die in a couple spots, so I'm here standing and uh, laughing away. Well, you're standing in third right now, so uh, welcome to the dark side. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the dark side. <laughs> 
<laughs> the dark side. Oh, man. Ryan Nyquist. It doesn't matter how high pressure the situation is. This guy's always having more fun than anybody. Oh, yeah. He's the youngest one out here in a certain way. Oh, big time. So, talking about one of the oldest guys in the competition. Now, this is the youngest guy who's ever won a Crankwork Slope Style, doing it when he was, I want to say, 15 in 2011. Now securing his status as one of the main fixtures on the series, never ever being bumped off. Uh, well, I know with this new Crankwork series and them cutting down the riders and everything, it's, uh, you know, the consistency is a huge factor because you have one inconsistent event and that might bump you from the whole series, right? So uh, I think that's something a lot of us are kind of shifting our focus to is to try to stay consistent at the same time as trying to like push yourself into those top spots. So I mean, um, for me, I I'm trying to stay consistent, trying to, you know, stay in that top seven, five or whatever, but also, um, you know, maybe in my second run, push myself a little bit towards the podium. Well, great insight from Anthony Missouri. He seems to have cracked the code on how to stay on tour, but you hear him say right there, it's a fine line between reaching your potential and staying on tour. Is he going to go for glory or is he going to play it safe, Ty? What do you think? Pretty excited for this oh! right now. We saw him doing that in practice. Pretty much everything that he's planning on doing, he's already done. So his confidence is to the roof. Double oh! tail up on the cannon there, maybe getting a little toss from the wind. Able to recover, landed perfect on that hip. So he's back on rhythm. Big front flip on the hip there now. 360 in, see what he's got out of the whale tail. Back flip, one foot of can. He's got some big force on the last jump here. Oh, back flip, double back flip, parchment. Double How did he hold on to that? Man. Anthony Missouri. So I know he may have had different plans for that run there. So he was going a little impromptu, switching it up with his speeds, maybe how the winds were throwing him around. So that's his experience. Anthony's been on tour a long time. He's calm, collected. He was able to get a run there. And there wasn't anything small in that run. So I think he should have a pretty good score right now. Oh, I thought for a second he was going to throw it all away. That cash roll would have meant nothing if he fell on the flip double bar spin. And if he just did a flip bar spin, his score would have been considerably lower. So he knew that he needed that extra bar spin, but it was such a risk. Like he said in that interview, it's a fine line balancing your risk versus reward. Exactly. So check out this cash roll here. That is a big jump. He Hip almost has them smoother on the big jumps than when you see him do them on the smaller ones. Exactly. Sometimes you see those mostly on steeper jumps. And this one here, such a risky move. So exposed to the wind up here in the Alps. Especially doing that trick. Yeah, double tail up. When you're off your bike, the wind just wants to throw you around. But he's using his core strength to hold it all centered, locked in. And then this right here, the backflip, one foot of can out, landing a little off kilter, but still able to maintain its speed. Look how late. Backflip double oh. bar spin, holding it together. Oh man, he must have had a big sigh of relief after that. That right hand grabbed onto the grip just moments before his tires touched down. So a great save there for Anthony Missouri, putting that one into the finish corral. What are the judges gonna do with it? To knock Matt Jones out of the hot seat, he needs to better a 79.5. To break into the top three, he needs to beat a 71. I have a feeling this is gonna be a pretty big score. I think this is gonna keep him on tour. He always delivers. He always does what he's gotta do to stay in there. Such a good guy to have out here at the comps. He's always progressing, always learning new things. So as the judges deliberate, Anthony Bazzari sits there, his job, has been done. Time for the judges to do theirs. This can sometimes be the most nerve-wracking part of the process. Well, here comes the score for Anthony in Missouri in run number one. Good enough for third place, a 73. So he nods his head, knows that's going to be good enough to get him some points. But you can tell he wants to bump that up a little bit. You see him shaking his head. So current standings. As they sit right now, Anthony Missouri goes into that third place spot. Podium position so far. Simon Godziak, a full 3.25 points ahead of him, sitting in second. But Matt Jones holding on to that hot seat spot for quite a long time right now, dodging a lot of bullets. All right, our next rider getting ready in the start tower from France. Young rider, age 21, Simon Pages. 
Now this kid, we just never know what to expect from him. The way he practices for a slope style contest is very mysterious, kind of reminiscent of how Brandon Semenuk used to practice in his competitive days. I saw him watching his competitors practice a bunch, maybe not using all the practice time, but when he did, he made it count. And he just kind of watched what his competitors are doing, maybe watched how the course is flowing. And he's starting out with a truck driver off the flat drop. Backflip there, so he doesn't get a combo, so the judges are going to take note of that, but we'll see if he can make up for it on the rest of the course here. That was an opposite tail up on the cannon there. So doing that is unnatural direction, slight under rotation. So this might be a throwaway for him. Couple of mistakes, he's a little off rhythm. Yeah, these straight backflips are not going to help, and he knows it. Straight airing down the whale tail means that he's waving off this run. He'll put all of his chips on the table for run number two. May seem weird to see a rider make a small mistake and then throw the whole run away, but these days, everything has to be perfect. So some of the things in this run that didn't go his way which caused him to throw in the towel. Let's take a look back. Simon Pagez is a rider who usually surprises us in the finals with stuff we weren't expecting from him. But we had this truck driver right here. It was a double truck driver on the hip. And I remember the landing was a little sketchy. So this landing is, he's supposed to spin a little bit more than 360 because the landing's tilted to the left. He's spinning to the left. So he wasn't able to get the extra rotation there. Luckily he didn't go down, but he knew he made a, mis he made a mistake. The judges were gonna take note. These guys want to put down their, their top runs. Well, realistically these days, if you do a straight backflip on the second feature of the course, right then and there you know your score is not going to be high. It would be a lot of ground to make up. So he'll get back up to the top of the course. But the man sitting at the top right now was one of the riders who were a part of the two-horse race last year, the best battle we've ever seen in the history of slope style. We're talking about Nikolai Ragakin. I was able to catch up with Nikolai, try to figure out what makes him tip in the next episode of McCall Meets. Take a look. So just climb up the ladder to the roof of the family house with your bike. I don't know if you've noticed, but the ladder is really sturdy also. OK, now let's get a peek. Oh, yeah, that's steep, all right. <laughs> right on, dude. Just don't think about it. Yeah. Just don't think about it. Yeah. Totally normal. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh. Oh. The bag is super stiff. I was Holy the bag, cow. Man. Might as well have a landing down there. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Dude, oh. you are so big. <laughs> I thought you said this was an airbag. This is like a deck. This isn't an airbag. The G out got him pretty good. But after this rolling, no rolling is ever scary. It's no secret that this doesn't resemble a slope style course at all. There's not space like the, some of the guys have in Canada to just build whatever. But give a lot of credit to my dad for the ideas that he came up with. Well, Tyler, how about the engineering on that training facility? I'll tell you what, this guy has earned everything he has. That airbag is not inviting, yet he's learned so many tricks on it. We've seen him in practice adapting those tricks to the course already. And now here we go. Last year's reigning champion dropping into the Innsbruck slope style. Oh, pedaling. We've got a 1080 twister. Watch how he slows that down. He's spinning three times, but it looks so easy when he does it. Oh, this is looking like his run last year. So clean, no pedals. Triple tail up on the hip there, coming to the next hip. He's on a heater. Oh! A cash roll ground chuck. We saw him do that on the last jump in Rotorua, doing something unique up there. Oh! Cork 720 down the step down, coming into the money what? booter. And the cash oh! roll bar spin, but he goes down. Oh man, he was pulling out all the stops right there, and everything was looking so perfect. Oh, he was just hanging on by a thread by the time he got to that final feature. I can't believe he still tried that cash roll bar spin. Now the cork 720 on the whale tail was so huge, and the fact that he did the one-handed Superman seat grab into it. Oh, that was so close. So such a big trick out of the whale tail, and he's hanging off the back of his bike by one hand going into it. 
So not much time to set up, but he's still able to land it perfect. That there, a 1080 on the first jump. So calm and slow in the way that he pulls in that last 90 degrees. Now the first third of this run was identical to what he did to win just a year ago. But take a look, this is a trick that he used in Rotorua. The cash roll ground chuck, it's called. I called it a uh, cash roll seat grab. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with these tricks, especially what Nikolai's doing. Brings his own style to everything. So that there, now we're seeing it mid-course. And look, I mean, a lot of people talk about Nikolai's style, saying that it's different. That's a stylish trick right there, that cash roll seat grab. This right here, the cork 720 in. One of the biggest moves in his run, but it may have thrown him a little off kilter. You saw in that cork 720 down, he landed a little bit on the side, losing a little bit of speed. He sprinted into this cash roll bar spin, just barely under rotating. I love the way that he does that cash roll bar spin. He throws the handlebars with his left hand, so it's kind of into the, into the spin. He's got to get his knees out of the way. And if he clips one of his knees, the whole spin's going to stop. So, so much going on right there. So hard to get right, and he was just, just a hair off. So Nikolai Ragakin, the 2017 champion here at Crankworx Innsbruck Slope Style, will look toward his second run to improve. But we now focus our attention back to the top of the course, where Thomas Lemoyne, a guy who's been pulling triple duty out here, putting his name on the sign-up sheet for so many different disciplines. And our own Michaela caught up with Thomas Lemoyne. Check it out. That's right, Cam. Like you said, this guy is the only slope style rider to be competing in three different events this week. He did the pump track on Thursday night. He won the dual speed and style the next night, which was his second win there. And um, he is competing in slope style today. And I would say he is looking to improve on that bronze medal run that he had here last year. Now, another interesting thing about this guy is that he is currently sitting second in the overall standings for the King of Crankworx. So he could maybe even be the only slope style guy to be king of crankworks at the end of this season. It's going to be interesting. That's right, Michaela. A lot of the riders out here who, who compete in slope style don't compete in the other disciplines because this is so much to focus on. But what king of crankworks is, it's points from all the different disciplines added up through the four stops, and it's twenty thousand dollars at the end of the year if you're crowned king. So he had a big day yesterday with speed and style. We'll see if he's fatigued. He's not looking like it so far. Backflip, tuck no hander to bar spin. Big 360, tuck no hander off the cannon there. 360 inward, table to bar spin. Such Lemoyne style on that. Oh! Opposite 360, tuck no hander. I think that's a new one. I haven't seen him do that yet. Front flip into the whale tail. Truck driver out. Landing really low there. See if he's able to get speed. Oh. Wow. <laughs> there were so many things about that backflip tail up that weren't easy and weren't supposed to go right. He landed low on the thing before, didn't have the speed, but he was able to race her through using that racer background, push through. His feet were backwards, it looked like. He was able to switch those before he landed. This kid is so mentally strong, doing so many events out here. Some people say they got bigger fish to fry when they talk about speed and style, pump track. He just wants to fry all the fish, just do everything. He's going for a fish feast out here. This guy's unstoppable. He can win in so many different disciplines out here at the Crankworks festivals. And the judges love these technical combos he adds into his 360s. A true athlete doing multiple disciplines out here. When you watch him ride, when you watch the way that he passes those handlebars, we're watching it in slow motion, but it looks like he's in slow motion in his head. Everything is just so calm and slow and not rushed. The amplitude, his ability to carry speed, He's one of the only guys who could land that long on the whale tail and then still not only make the last jump, but get a trick on it like a backflip tail. We're looking forward to seeing the replay of that backflip tail because if you look right now, he's riding right foot forward. Let's take a look at where his cranks were when he caught his pedals after that backflip tail up. Wow, so he almost missed the whole landing there, pushing through. You can kind of see how he thrusts there, grabbing Catch his, his pedals. Switch. Now he's left foot forward. <laughs> Not worried about it. You know, he's just going to put him on, switch him when he lands. Super chill. <laughs> not worried at all. With all the riding this kid does and all the events he competes in, I do not know how he finds time to scribble on his jeans. The judges right now taking their time, assigning a score to that run because there are so many little subtle intricacies that, at, that result in points. Yeah, he was on a real good one there with the opposite 360 tuck no hander, linking things on hips. And that was pretty clean, even though he had a small mistake at the end. He probably wanted something bigger on the last jump. 
Can we just keep a camera on Ryan Nyquist through the entire broadcast? <laughs> we'll just have him in a little two box in the bottom right hand corner. So if you're just joining us, you're wondering what our current rankings are. Take a look at the screen right now. Jakob Wenzel in fifth place. Ryan Nyquist, the man you saw joking around in the riders tent sitting in fourth. But the top three, Anthony Missouri, Simon Godzik, but Matt Jones still holding on to that top spot. This could be a huge breakout performance for him. Now Thomas Lemoyne is not only looking to podium this event, he's looking for those valuable points to try to become the king of Crankworks. Get that $20,000 bonus check at the end of the year if you do get that crown. So much to balance, trying to do multiple events, making all the practices, and not sacrificing one event. And he's going for the win in everything that he enters, so it's super impressive to watch him as an athlete compete here at Crankworks in multiple disciplines. Well, Thomas Lemoyne's first podium in Slopestyle was last year. Right now, he gets a 77.5, good enough for a second place so far. Can he hold on to it and repeat on that podium? Not bad. I think he's sitting in a great spot right now. And although that was very impressive, we know he has more in the tank. But now, look who we got, Cam. One of your favorites in the start gate. Now, Diego is one of my favorites. And the main reason is, well, He's a great guy, but also you never know what to expect from him. He's a crowd pleaser. You can see his friend Evo right there flying the flag in support, but he got his first podium at stop number one this year. He has fully arrived on the Crankwork Slope style scene. No longer an underdog, not working his way up. He's at the top. Diego Caverzasi had this to say about his own style and process for choosing tricks. Well, uh, I don't want to send the twister here. I could do it, but I don't want to be the Nicolette number two. So I got my own style, my own tricks. I would do something different this time. Oh, <laughs> that just makes you wonder, doesn't it? If that's not hinting at the fact that we may see something new right now, I don't know what is. So I'm pretty excited to hear somebody say they could do a twister, but they don't want to because they want to do something different. So this is going to be exciting here. Ride or die, Ryder Diego. What are we going to see right now? Been riding great in practice. Front flip, bar spin on that jump there. Landing perfect to two tires. His speed is on. on oh! bar. Big front flip there. I love that angle, seeing how high off the ground he is. Oh, holding it together. A 360 tail up on that hip. Back flip, bar spin on the next hip. Losing a little bit of speed. Backflip, right. tuck no hander out of the whale tail. This Got is it. where we have our question marks here. Oh, a backflip cliffhanger. Unfortunately, not able to hold on. That has to be what he was talking about. That's got to be it. That's not a trick you see every day, and that's something new. He did not try to do that small. He went full extension. Looked like he maybe just missed a hand there, maybe missed a foot. He was on to a pretty exciting run right there. Well, I love the fact that he's not just going to do a trick that he does have in his bag that he knows will score well. To update you, if you miss Rotorua, he did a front court 1080. It's called the Twister. And he got a podium position, a third place. But he's trying to be different, get some creativity points, because that's also a valuable category on the judge's scorecard. The front flip on the cannon log is going to score really high. So everything was going smooth up until this hip. He just came up a little bit short. It's kind of a chain reaction effect. Once it happens on one jump, it's pretty likely to happen on the next. So that's why you see guys pedaling, trying to make up for it. Judges take note of that, but it's better than just pulling off track. But we were so curious what we were going to see on this last jump. And I was not expecting to see a backflip cliffhanger. But we're going to get a chance to see what went wrong here shortly. Great extension on the backflip tuck. No hander out of the whale tail. Big points for that. But no points are going to count because he didn't stomp his last trick. Look at that straight line on the extension, unfortunately. So he's hooking his feet onto the handlebars and completely laying back. It looked like the bike may have caught up to him and hit him in the butt, which he wasn't expecting. It kind of threw the rotation of the bike off. And then you're hanging off by your feet, you know? You, you need everything to be in the right place. When the bike gets bumped a little bit out of whack, you go to put your hands on, they're not in the right spot. Kind of throws everything off. So unfortunately, Diego Caverzasi will have to head to the top of the course 
and hopefully try that backflip cliffhanger again because I would love to not only see him stomp that trick, but see what the score would have been for all those other moves. Exactly. I think he was on to a really good one there. Well, a guy we don't typically see not finish a run. He earned the nickname King of Consistency for a reason. He's the last European competitor to win a Crankworx Slope Style Stop. And that was all the way back in 2012. Can he do it again here today? 360, tuck no hander off the start drop. Same thing we saw Jakob Benzel doing. Truck driver there looking like he may have wanted something else, but it looked like he was over rotating a little bit. Opposite 360, one foot of can. Over rotation, but able to go through. He says, you know what? Spike looks a little out of whack. He's just going to look to run number two to clean that up. So, talking about how consistent, consistent he is, and then he messes up his run. That's not what we expect to see out of Thomas Janon. But he is a veteran in this discipline, so I know he's going to get back up there, strategize a way to make sure he stomps this. So here's where it went wrong. We're doing the three opposite 360 topside can. And ready, stop. Here we go. You see the foot came off the pedal, and now his eyes are up looking at the next jump. But you have to be mega composed. All right, roll the film. In order to get the next jump, but not having enough speed, you usually pump to get enough speed. You see, he barely made it over that jump. Not enough speed to have a trick. That meant the end of the run for Thomas Chenon. It looked like maybe his rear wheel got bumped out of alignment, which made it rub on the chain stays. Slowed his rotation of the wheel down, lost his speed. So he's going to go fix that bike up. Get back in the gate for run number two. Everybody's human. Even guys like Thomas Janon, who you rarely see screw up, everybody makes mistakes sometimes. Well, at this point, we have only one rider left to drop. The current score to beat is held by Great Britain's Matt Jones. It's a 79.5. But if anybody can smash that and break into the 80s, it's this man right here. The guy who won stop number one of the 2018 season in Rotorua. The guy who got second place last year right here in Innsbruck during the best battle we've ever seen. I'm talking about Brett Reeder. Yeah, I could do a safety run. Um, and probably still do pretty good, but um, that's not who I am. I don't care about the points. I don't care about the rivalry. I just want to do my run. <laughs> well, you heard it right there. Strong words from Brett Reeder. He came here with a goal in mind, and he's not going to leave without at least trying that goal. So he's got a new trick. We saw him put it up on Instagram the other day. He tried it off this first start drop in practice, had a big crash. Here we Let's go. See if he's going to do it again. Back foot tail off the start drop. First one we've ever seen in competition into a front flip bar spin. Man, that's got to feel good to get through that. Can he hold it together? Back flip bar spin. Now he's done a lot of this run already in practice. That was an opposite cork 720 into a regular cork 720. That's exactly what the judges want to see on those hips there. Oh, here that we go. Coming into the last jump. Backflip opposite oh! double tail whip. Oh, We've man. never seen that before either. Always stepping up the game, Brett Reeder. Those guys just so impressed with the way that he's always able to step it up. He's not in top form right now in, form, in, in terms of his body. He's a little sore and battered, but he's able to get back up, stomp that flat drop, backflip. Tail whip. We've never seen that before. That's a historical move right there. He posted that trick on his Instagram. He landed it at his home training facility in his backyard. But the reason why that is so historic, we're going to go into detail right now with this replay. Take a look. So there's Back. no takeoff on that platform there. He has to initiate the spin with his body only. Now, you've seen that trick off of things like a whale tail or lip downs where there's a kicker to initiate the rotation. But doing a flat drop backflip is tough enough, but we've never seen a variation like a backflip tail whip done on a flat drop. And that right there was his opposite direction spun cork 720 into regular. So he's spinning different directions in those, and that's what the judges really like to see. 
Look at the style right there, putting all of his limbs in the right place at the right time to be so efficient with his body movements. Now we haven't talked yet about the last jump because he was so perfect on everything else. It almost seems insane to nitpick, but we're getting close to that final feature there. But the opposite 360 bar spin to bar spin back right into the regular 360 double bar spin and then this. So watch here, he's gonna kick with his front foot, his left foot here. That's how you know it's his opposite direction. Backflip, opposite, double tail up. Comes in so awkward and unfamiliar feeling when you do an opposite tail up like that. So everything has to be taken into consideration. The score to beat was a 79.5 held by Matt Jones. Is it gonna be enough? He had a minor bobble on the last jump, but he broke new ground at the top of the course. Brett Reeder is the new leader, an 86.75 being rewarded for progression. Michaela Gatto is standing by with your new resident of the hot seat, Brett Reeder. All right, so for someone who says he's not completely on his game, you are currently sitting in first. You did a historical backflip tail whip off of the first flat drop. What the heck, man? <laughs> well, I'm not on my game. I got to admit, I'm, my, legs are, my legs are weak. I'm, I'm weak. I, I, I fell a couple days ago, and I'm still recovering from it. But uh, oh, yeah, feels good to get down here. Um, definitely have some stuff to clean up for run two. How good did it feel to stomp the trick that you actually crashed on two days ago? <laughs> For sure, it felt good. Um, it's, uh, it's a little different than what I'm used to. That's this drop for that trick. There's so many elements of the trick where you have to take into consideration. And, uh, and same with this last, the last jump here, uh, having some difficulties on that last jump. So uh, hopefully uh, run two goes better. Yeah, well, that was a super solid run regardless and enough space for round two to clean it up a little bit. But congratulations for currently being in the first spot. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. Wow, what a run for Brett Reeder, a guy who's never satisfied. Luckily, will re-rack. He'll be able to go last again because he's currently sitting in the first place position. Of course, he went last just now because he won the last event. But you know, if anybody pushes him, let's say like Nikolai Regakin like he did last year, you know he's going to throw it all out. There we go. There's a look at our current standings. We're going to get all the riders back up to the top of the course. Crankworks Innsbruck Slope Stop presented by Kenda. Second run's coming up.
All right. Don't worry, just go to redbull.tv. You have the beauty of watching this contest on your own terms. Watch whoever you want to watch, what, watch whatever you want to watch. Throw it up on your social media, share it with your friends. Check out anybody's run as many times as you want. Well, what a ridiculous first run we saw from all the riders, especially the last guy we saw drop, Brett Reeder. Were you guys expecting that flip whip? Did you know he had that in his bag? Yeah, uh, I expected that, but it's still crazy, mind blowing. Now we've got in the booth up here, Reed Boggs and Torquato Testa, two guys who have been here at the top of the sport competing on the Crankworks Tour, riding these slope style contests. Torquato, you've even had a podium, but just tell me how difficult it is to stay on tour with the way the format works and the points you need to get an invitation. Yeah, uh, because now um, in Crankworks only 12 guys are in. So basically it's 12 guys plus two wildcards every event, so 14 guys in total. And it's pretty hard to stay in. As you see, the level is super high. And um, you just have to go to, to the gold event to try to collect points or to win a wildcard. Uh, wildcard and gold event are really good to just go to, to these events. Like um, in this event, uh, Alex Alanko, uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good point. Now, it, it just goes to show, I mean, you're a guy who's been on the podium in Rotorua. So even a guy like you who's tasted the juices of a podium spot, you have what it takes. It can happen to anybody. You can have yeah. an off day and lose the points. So what is your strategy to get back here? Um, my strategy, actually, it's uh, not thinking about too much about points, because if you stress too much yourself, maybe you will miss up and that's not that's not good. I think it's just uh, try to go to uh, to go to gold events and trying to do your best and uh, and that's it actually. As when I started and when I became a, a crankworks rider, I was just thinking about that, not watching too much the ranking, but just having fun on bike and doing my best. So Reed, we saw you in Rotorua. You were mending a hurt shoulder, which you injured at Rampage. You were hoping to just maintain some points in Rotorua, and even that wasn't enough, unfortunately. So how frustrating is that to be riding not at your top level, which made it, in turn, make it so you're not on the rider list here? Yeah, it's definitely difficult, um, but I'm just more motivated than ever. Um, I'm going to head to a gold event after this and try to get some points and make it to the next one. So you're using it as fuel, doing what you need to do, going to the gold level events and working your way back up the ranks. Yeah, definitely. Well, you're and, close, so. Yeah, thanks. We hope to see you up there. For sure. Well, you guys, I know you'll do what you need to do. You've played the alternate card to your advantage in the past and made sure that you stuck around and you did practice with all the riders in case somebody unfortunately pulled out of the event. And that's how you rode every single spot on the tour last year. So did you ride every practice here being an alternate today? Yeah, this one was definitely busy because I was jumping around from whip off and speeding style, but I definitely tried to get on the course as much as I could. And uh, yeah, I was ready uh, to jump in today if I needed to. Um, but yeah, I'm stoked for everybody else and looking forward to the next one. Well, you guys stick around. We got more we want to do with you. But the judges are the ones who decide how good your runs were, what kind of points they're going to give for your tricks, and that in turn decides if you're going to be at the next event. The third member of our team, Michaela Gatto, is going to check in with the judges and figure out how they come up with these scores that mean so much to these guys. Thanks, Cam. Yeah, I'm just nervous sitting here. Um, these these sheets, I don't even, I, this, this is like Greek to me. Uh, explain what is kind of the first thing you look for in someone's run? Well, um, we definitely start with the diversity of tricks you're throwing. Uh, then it goes into execution, style, your amplitude. Um, what we'd use in another course that has more lines would be your use of course that is useless here. So mainly the diversity of your tricks and your execution are what are standing out right now. And as far as Brett Reader's first done in competition, the flip whip off the flat drop, do you take into consideration someone doing a completely new trick that you haven't seen in competition before? Uh, we do take that in consideration, but then it all comes down to how he did it, um, where he did it, and he did it perfectly, and he did it in a uh, very high risk spot, so it definitely worked to his advantage. Perfect. And one more question, because I'm allowed to pick favorites. Matt Jones's run, 
was the energy that was coming off that guy. He That was his second run that he's completed in three years. Do you take into consideration kind of like the energy that's that the riders have, or is that something, everything's just completely emotionless? No, that'd be more of like um, a crowd favorite pick or a factor that would qualify in there. Like we, we completely separate emotion, any sort, the riders or the judges, uh, when we're giving our scores. So it is exciting. I'm, I'm happy for them, but when it comes down to the pen and paper, it doesn't matter. Perfect. Well, it sounds like you guys are pretty dialed uh, down here, so or up here, I should say. So I'm going to vacate before I get a little bit too stressed out. <laughs> Thanks, Michaela. So it's good to hear from the judges where their head's at and uh, what kind of factors play into their score making. I know it takes a little bit of time to absorb the judging sometimes, but right now, after we just saw those first runs, do you feel like all in all they got it right, or do you feel like there's any spots where they messed up, either of you? Uh, I think everything's spot on right now. They know what they're doing, and yeah, Brett Reader's run was just off the charts. It was pretty mind-blowing. <laughs> now, that's, that goes without saying. He did something that nobody's ever done before and landed in a competition. His first run, it brings about this question. Does anybody have what it takes to knock him off the spot? And if so, who? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. It's like, uh, it's like hard to, to, to be a judge and uh, like decide who's, who's first and who, who put in the list. But, so like, say a guy like Nikolai, because the battle was between those two guys. Yes. Now Nikolai's looking at this run that we're watching right now. What does he need to do? If he landed his run, do you think it would have been enough? Yeah, but you mean Nikolai? Nikolai. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they are different, but both runs are super, are super technical. Like Nikolai is going like super huge with huge rotation and things like that. But I think it would be like last year. Last year was like a huge bottle, I think. It's the same. We can hope. I feel it's the yeah. same. I think if Nikolai gets a run that he wants to get, he's going to be up there with Brett, and it's going to be good for second runs. And as, are crossed. as viewers, what we all want to see is Brett have to do another run. You know yeah. he doesn't want to have to, but you know he has it in the tank. He's got more. And, uh, yeah, we want to see another battle. For sure. Cool. Well, the anticipation builds into second runs. I can't wait to see if we're going to see a repeat of that dogfight between those two guys. Now, if anybody can do it, it's going to be Nikolai. Those are our opinions. You know, everybody has their opinions. And uh, you know, out there with the internet, anybody can voice that opinion. And we have our pesky friend, Calvin Huth, who likes to comedically voice his opinions. He'll catch you up on what happened in Rotorua right now. Take a look. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Crank Works No Bad Days talk show. My name is Calvin Hutt, and this is my co-host, Mrs. Peckers. We're going to be talking Crankwork Slope Style. She's beautiful. Oh, I need a break. One of the biggest shockers of the last event was Nikolai Rogatkin getting fifth. That simply is not good for Nikolai, and he's going to be out for blood. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about Nikolai, he's like the FMB's fidget spinner. Except for this fidget spinner, only likes to spin one direction. It's not a fan of going the opposite way. That's my rooster. It, it just crows all day long. It's so annoying. One of my favorite young up and coming slope style athletes is Diego Saversacci. Diego Saversacci. Saversacci. From Italy, his new sponsors are Riri Zippers and David Michaels Winery which is fantastic because we all know how much the Italians love their zippers. Right behind Diego in the last event was French athlete Thomas Lemoine, AKA Thomas Lemon. Now my hopes for the future of Slope Style is that French athlete Thomas Lemon is gonna be sponsored by a Velcro company. That way we can have the French and the Italians battling it out, really settling the debate of zippers versus Velcro once and for all. If you want to see more of these No Bad Days talk shows, go visit my YouTube channel. It's Calvin Huff, No Bad Days. And uh, yeah, we'll just talk more crank works. It'll be awesome. It'll be good fun. Enjoy, enjoy the show. Good old Calvin. Tyler, thoughts on roosters? Thoughts on roosters. Thoughts on Calvin, man. He's always good for a laugh. Such a funny guy, bringing a light attitude to the sport here. But he's got, some good, he's got some good points there, you know? He knows what he's talking about. Well, thank you, Internet, 
for giving everybody a voice, even pink bike commenters. Why not? Everybody's got everybody's got an opinion. Why not get it out there? Yeah, there's a saying that goes along with that also. We won't go there. But where we will go when we return from this break is run two of stop number two of the Crankworks FNBA Slopestyle World Championships. You're not going to want to miss it. Stick around. Well, there we have it, those beautiful alpine peaks we've been speaking about. Of course, we're in Innsbruck, Austria for the Crankworx Innsbruck Slope Style presented by Kenda. If you call yourself a mountain bike fan, then you're tuning in to all the broadcasts for stop number two of the Crankworx World Tour. Right now, we're gonna be starting the second runs. If you haven't seen the first runs, we'll update you on the format. Each rider gets two runs with the best run counting. That will be our start order right now, reverse from the current rankings. So that, of course, means that Brett Reeder will be dropping last, being able to watch what all of his competitors have to say, and then finding out if he has to answer back. And what are we hoping for? We're, we're hoping for somebody to make him answer back. So we're going to see Eric Fedko dropping in first. He had a bad crash, so I hope to see him in the start gate. See all the riders hanging out in the rider lounge right now. Some getting psyched by listening to their favorite music. Others goofing around like Ryan Nyquist. Everybody has their own method to prepare for these high stress moments. But man, watching these riders stomp their runs and celebrate in that finish line berm. It's polar opposite to what they're feeling at the top of the course right there. And we love to watch that process. Of course, all the fans enjoying the beautiful sun out here in the Austrian mountains. It's a perfect day for slope style. We say we don't want wind over 10 miles per hour. It's sitting right there at 10, so hopefully it continues to die out through the day, but we haven't seen it cause too many problems for the riders out there like we've seen in the past at different venues. So whoever scheduled today at slope style day did a great job. These riders have a lot of air time. We need some still air. You never know what you're gonna get up here in the Alps. We had some rain on the first day at Crankworks. Perfect skies now, and look who we got in the gate. He's back up. That was a heavy crash. This kid is strong. And we don't know a ton about Eric Fedko. This is his second appearance in a Crankworks event, but we know that he's composed. He seems really strong. We now know that he's incredibly tough, riding more than most in practice, putting in the reps. But unfortunately, in run number one, crashing on a massively extended 360 Superman Seacrab Indian Air on the second feature of the course, that dirt to dirt double. I'm so psyched to see him back up in the gate because he was looking so clean and so dialed in practice. I know that if he puts this run down, we could put him up there in podium contention. Eric Fedko dusts the, sh the dust off of his shoulder and drops in for run number two. Here he goes, switching up his trick there, playing the tactical game, just gonna try to get some points. See what he has planned for the rest of his run. Double truck driver, so he's not taking it easy. You know he's sore from that crash. Oh. Not phase. phase, backflip tail up on the hip. Double tail up clean on the next hip. Wow. He's downside tail up into the whale tail. Backflip tuck no hander out. Now he's got one more chance to wow the judges. Oh, he's got this. Truck driver yeah. to tail it. <laughs> oh. Oh, Eric man. Fedko dropping a hammer on the last jump after a smooth run top to bottom, blowing out that back tire, and the crowd goes wild. That gave me goosebumps, man. I was rooting for this kid. It's so good to see people get up after a crash like that. He didn't let him phase <laughs> him. He knows he's going to be hurting tomorrow. 
Got that last trick, got his feet on at the last second. Oh, the energy alongside this course right now after he stomped that run, the crowd pulling for him because this is the jump he crashed on right now, being smart, deciding to do an easier trick and focus all his energy on the rest of the course. He's new to the scene, but he rides with so much experience. It's like he's been around forever. Maybe he wasn't 100% dialed on that 360 Indian Air up there, so he switched it up, didn't want to risk crashing again, and he clearly had quite the run planned after that. Well, you got to talk about each one of these events is the battle. The big war is to stay on tour, try to rank high in the overall World Championship Series. Make sure you get invited back for next year. But this was a huge risk, and it's going to pay off. Look at that slight under rotation, but it didn't matter. He rode out of it smooth, riding on his rim with his tire just flapping around. Now, you don't see emotion out of this kid very often. He's usually straight to the point, but when he stomps his run, He's all about playing it up to the crowd, and they're loving every minute of it. He works hard. You can tell after his result in Rotorua, he wasn't content. He wanted more, so he went home. He's always posting new tricks that he's learning on Instagram. We knew that he was going to come out swinging, and it's so good to see him be able to deliver out here. Now, I put Eric Fedko on my fantasy team. You saw that at the beginning of the show. He's looking to beat a 77.5 right now to slide into podium position. Is it going to be enough right now? Thomas Lemoyne currently sitting in third place. A podium for this young rider would be huge for his career and help him stay on tour. Here come our scores. How high will this bar climb up that ladder? He improves in yeah. 82 for second place getting up after a huge crash, dusting off himself and dropping the hammers, sitting in second place in the 80s. The only other rider we have in the 80s right now is Brett Reeder, who's sitting in the lead. Such a good story right there. I wasn't expecting him to see him get up in the start gate. Once we saw him, we thought, maybe he's just going to roll down, maintain some points. But he went out, and he's sitting in second place right now. Well, we just saw Eric Fed go recuperate his energy, focus his mind in the right direction, and stomp his run. This man is going to have to do that same exact thing. Thomas Janon, run number one. Had an uncharacteristic bobble on this opposite 360 one-footed can, causing him to lose speed, not able to finish his run. And this guy has won Red Bull Joyride in Whistler. So if anybody knows what to do right now to walk that thin line, not risk too much, but still stomp his run, it's this man right here. Tommy G has another chance right here, right here to make it down the course. Starting out the same so far. 360 no-hander. 360 one foot of can. We'll see if he goes with the opposite one foot of can 360. Choosing to just stay 360, not getting the combo there. Now that was an opposite 360 tuck no-hander. Oh, to a 360 tail up so smooth. Double tail up into the whale tail. 360 invert like only Thomas Shannon does. Truck yes. driver to tail up on the last jump, just what we saw for him in Rotorua that put him so high in the ranking. So that's got to feel good. Thomas Shannon, the 360 bars from the tail up is the trick of the hour right now, seeing two riders drop back to back who messed up their first runs and now stomping the same trick on the final jump. See, we knew it. We call him king of consistency for a reason. This guy always delivers. He knows how to strategize and make the changes necessary to get a score in the bag. These guys coming in with a never give up mentality and it's proving, proving to be a good call here. Thomas Shannon switching up his run slightly, but in the end, able to make it down. Finishing with the same trick, same trick that got him on the podium in Rotorua. And you see sometimes when riders mess up a trick in their first run, They'll try to just get that out of their mind, take it away. It's only one of seven features. Try something different, and that was definitely the veteran decision for Thomas Shannon. One of the highlights for me was how clean that 360 tail up was right there. Everything was just so slow. He wasn't rushing it, and that's what the judges like to see. Now watch this guy in slow motion. His extension on things like that 360 table are so picture perfect. And then watch how early he gets his feet back on the pedals on this 360 bar spin to tail whip. So he already threw the bars, kicking the bike. 
Getting his feet on. That could not have been any better. So the judges are going to take note of that as well. He had opposites. He had triple combos. He had a little bit of everything. Trick selection, execution, amplitude. It was all there. Where will it place him in the rankings right now? Now, of course, Matt Jones knocked down into the third place position with his 79.5. Thomas Janan is going to need to beat that score in order to move into a podium spot. So we're seeing riders get a little bit closer to Reader. We're going we're gonna to see if we're going to have anybody knock him down and force him to do, a, do another banger second run. See, there we go. Asking you shall receive. I wanted to have a two box with Ryan Nyquist at all times, and we now have it. If Thomas Janon is the king of consistency, I suppose Ryan Nyquist would have to be the king of entertainment. Always good to have him around. Now the judges are looking a little bit stressed. Maybe we need to get Nyquist into the judges' box to lighten up the mood a little bit. A lot of pressure on these guys. Never an easy job at these slope styles, especially when the level's so high and so many people land runs. Two of the riders that we saw not get a first run, just stomp their second run, and that kind of changes everything. Well, the judges taking their time because Thomas Janon basically embodies what they look for in a slope style run. Execution meaning so much these days with every rider having such a deep bag of tricks. You have to have precision with those tricks. So here's how our leaderboard looks currently. Top five, Simon Godziak still hanging out. Thomas Lemoyne in fourth. Now, of course, Matt Jones, Eric Fedko, and Brett Reeder rounding out the top three. Where will Thomas Shannon sit in this ranking? We are about to find out. He looks more nervous now than he did to start his run. Thomas Shannon, a 76.75, good enough for fifth place. Knocking Simon Godziak down the rankings. Looking content with that. I know he had more that he was hoping to do, but as we call him the king of consistency, it's how he stays on tour. He always gets a run. He's always somewhere up there. So even if he's not in the top three, he's somewhere close, gets his points, makes him hungry, looking to the next event. Well, we're an ocean away here in beautiful Innsbruck, Austria. You see those mountain peaks. But let's talk about Whistler, British Columbia, the place that we all know and love, the best bike park in the world is getting even better. Garbanzo's open, but they're also opening up a whole new section, the Creekside Zone. It's officially open now. It features five brand new trails spanning over 13 kilometers, and this is the first season you'll be able to ride it. So if you haven't been to Whistler, get out there, Nine. Even if you already have, get out there and try the new trails. Well, back to business here in Innsbruck. We have our newcomer to the game out of Sweden, Alex Alonko, currently sitting in 14th place. Now, he didn't have exactly what he was looking for in run number one, so a lot of room for improvement here, Tyler. Here he comes, starting out with a truck driver off the flat drop. Backflip double bar spin right there on that jump. Coming to the cannon. We'd love to see this kid get a run all the way down the course. Opposite 360. Maybe losing a little bit of speed. Double truck driver. So that's where he made a mistake now. So he's already on to a better run. Oh! Double tail. He has a big case there. It's the last chance. You got to push through and get those points, Alex Alonco. Back on rhythm. Oh, Cork 720 to finish things off. And that was perfect. Good to see Alex get a run in there. Maybe not exactly how he wanted it, but he made it down. He had some big tricks in there. He's frustrated, but I think he should be happy. This is his first appearance in a Crankworks. He's got the nerves out. Hopefully he'll stay on tour. Hopefully we'll see him again. We'll bring that experience with him. And now he's got a base to work on here. Well, first appearance on the big stage. And I got to say, he's doing pretty well here. That backflip, double bar spin, putting the tires at the very top of that landing. What were some of the highlights here for you, Tyler? Just the way that he was able to clean that up. He screwed up on it in first run. That double truck driver there was able to slow his rotation down and then ending with this perfect textbook Cork 720. Unfortunately, a couple hiccups in that run. The judges will definitely take notice of that. You could see Alex Alonco shaking his head, knowing that there were a couple mistakes there. But no matter what, it always feels good to finish a run in a Crankworks event. And he's one of the few people in the world who now knows that feeling.
These guys are perfectionists, so that's why you see them shaking their head. They want to be in the top five. I think he should be proud and holding his head high because he worked really hard to get here, and he got a run down at his first Crankworx ever. Okay. It's just ridiculous, the talent pool in Sweden. With two of our Swedish riders out, Emil Johansson still healing up, Max Fredriksson still healing up, but there's still a Swede in the game. What will the score be for Alex Alonko in his first Crankworx appearance? It's gonna be a 58.75, good enough for a 12th, moving up a couple spots in those rankings. Hopefully we'll see him again in the future. But next up, another guy who's got a lot of room for improvement from his first run out of France, Simon Pages. So on run one, we saw him make a mistake early on and throw the whole run away, which leads me to believe he's got a lot planned and he wants it all to go perfectly. Smooth so far. Backflip bar spin, so he missed the bar spin in first run on that trick. Opposite tail up on the cannon there is his unnatural direction. Double truck driver. Oh boy. Another opposite tail up, so interesting trick selection here. We're gonna expect to see some some kind of regular tail up combo on the last jump here, maybe. We need some balance. What's it gonna be? Flat spin double tail up. Perfect to the pedals. I knew there was gonna be some kind of tail up combo in there. That's one of his biggest tricks that he has. So I was hoping we'd see it. And that's gotta feel good as well, Cam. Well, that's great to see. We saw him crash real hard a couple years ago in New Zealand on that trick. Now he's clawed his way back up to the tour stomping it here in Innsbruck, despite having not so good of a run in his first attempt. So it shows that he can brush it off and get back up there, put his head in the right space. Simon so, Pagia is gonna improve on his score without a doubt. So good to see the four guys that we saw screw up in the run number one, sitting the lowest in the rankings, able to get a second run solid down the course. Now it's not so often you see a rider do two different opposite tail variations before you even see them do a regular tail variation. So you knew he had something planned for the last jump, didn't you? True, but to be fair, one was on a cannon, one was on a jump. So I don't think the judges are necessarily gonna call that a repeat trick, but it leads me to believe that maybe he wanted a double tail up in there on the second one. But I, I had a feeling this was coming here. This is his banger. This is what we were expecting to see him pull out. I love the axis on that. You call it a flat spin, 360 double tail up. He's almost leaning back like a flip whip, but he's in between those two worlds, and it just looks so good. It's great to see a big smile on that kid's face. He's been all business all week. And now we're going to find out what score he's earned for his efforts. Needing to beat a 79.5 to break into the top three. And here comes the score for Simon Pages, a 72, good enough for eighth place. Moving into that top 10, you know, he probably wanted to be a little bit higher, but at the end of the day, ending up in the top 10 at one of these events, even though there's only 14 guys, just beating six people, <laughs> it's not an easy task, especially when everybody's starting to get a solid run down the course. Now this next rider in the gate, having the season of his career right now, landing on the podium in Rotorua earlier this year with a third place. But things didn't go so smooth for him a year ago here in Innsbruck. Take a look at one of the worst crashes Diego Caverzasi says he's ever had. Just going for a backflip tail up there on the hip. We talk about how difficult it is to do these technical combos on a jump that has an angled landing, but this is worst case scenario. Not only did he not catch the pedals, he put his leg through the frame, got absolutely ejected off the bike, but he popped up like nothing happened, and he's back here again in 2018, looking to land on the podium again. So he's gonna try to keep that crash out of his mind right now, keeping everything moving forward. I just saw him practicing a double bar spin on the roll in there, so maybe we'll see something crazy on this first dirt jump here. Front flip, double oh! bar spin. Come on! Holy cow, this kid, man, he's always stepping it up. This is so huge, too. Perfect. Come on, Diego, hold it together. Over-rotated, perfectly 360. Oh, come on! You called that wow. time! 
So he crashed on a backflip tail up on that last year. Now he did a backflip bar spin a tail up. And it's a hip. I keep saying that, but man, it ain't Can he get this last trick? A cash roll yeah. and he stomps it. Diego Cabrazzi out of Italy stomping another huge run here at in Innsbruck. Proving that Rotorua was not a fluke. <laughs> this kid surprises himself every time he drops a run like that. That's a big run, and Brett's looking pretty nervous up there. I think that could be could be in contention. What do you think? Well, not only did he stomp those huge moves, but the execution was incredibly on point. He was putting his tires in the right place. He was catching his pedals early. He was landing straight. We're going to have to watch this entire run from top to bottom. So right here, he added a bar spin. He didn't land his first run, but he still wanted to step up even though he just needed to get a run in the bag. Tell me why front flipping that cannon is worth so many points. Well, you can see how high he is off the ground. And if you've ever ridden a cannon, leaning over the front, it's the last thing you want to do. You're looking <laughs> down at the ground that's probably 20 feet below you at least. Those elevated features, the front flips are going to be worth so many more points than if you do it on a double jump. Now here, the biggest combo in his run. So it was a backflip bar spin to tail up. The tail up was a slight downside tail up because it's a hip. And he crashed on that last year without even doing a bar spin before it. So he's stepping it up, slipped a pedal. He was able to recover, foot barely touching the ground. So hopefully they won't dock him too hard for that. But think about it. If your run is progressive enough, we saw Brett Reeder slip a pedal, but he's still sitting in first place. Exactly. If the progression's up there, the judges don't dock you as hard for the little mistakes. But the style on that cash roll, there's so many different ways to do that cash roll, which is basically a front cork 720. Diego makes it look so good. Now, Diego Cavarzasi, we're going to find out how he's absorbing this run. How's he feeling, Michaela Gatto? Thanks, Cam. Yeah, so you were just saying to me, that, to me, that was an absolutely stomped run. Um, but you were saying you wanted to throw in a table into that last cash roll? Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah, actually, I did. I kind of mixed it the first and the second round I wanted to do because I got a crash. And then during the last cash roll, I was a little bit hoping because I wanted to do a table. But when I see the landing, I was like, oh, oh, oh maybe not, not another crash. <laughs> Man, so these guys are doing decisions on the fly, in the air, as they're flying around, just making last minute changes to your tricks. That's insane. Congratulations on stomping that run. Yo. 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 <laughs> yes, Diego. Well, a lot of improvisation in the sport of slope style. They're crafting their runs as they go. And another thing, they're never satisfied. So we're going to get the score right now for Diego Cavarzasi. What will it be? All the way into second place, 84 for Diego Cavarzasi. Wow, what a performance. So close and so well deserved. He got his first podium in Rotorua at the last stop, proving that it wasn't a fluke. Doing it again out here. He's in contention to stay on that podium, so we'll see what the other riders coming up have for us today. Well, you see Brett Reeder on the phone there in that split screen. It just makes you wonder who he calls in a situation like this. Phone a friend, what should I do if this man right here happens to land a run and history repeats itself? It is a long thought process uh, that went through that. Um, I think I was actually pretty lucky to not do my first run exactly the way I wanted because it was kind of less pressure. It was things I knew I had to improve on and then some other options that I thought I could step up. I was thinking of just a front flip tail up on that last jump. I saw Godziak try it. I had done some, um, but I was talking to Nyquist in Missouri. I just asked them, what do you think, boys? <laughs> Cash roll whip, you think that's enough? And they're like, <laughs> they're like, go for it. I get all stoked, but then I think like, first I got to get to that last jump before I do this cash roll whip. Pretty much didn't think I was going to land that to the last second. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know if it was going to beat Re Reader's first run score either because Reader had an absolute killer of a first run. So when it topped it, I, it put Reader in an incredibly pressurizing situation. And uh, yeah, he stepped up like I've never seen before. Uh, that right there, that run that he did really proved that he's uh, almost unstoppable under pressure. You see Nikolai Rogatkin reminiscing about what happened exactly a year ago. A case of deja vu at the moment. Brett Reeder sitting in the hot seat. Nikolai Rogatkin having to better Brett Reeder's score. Can he do it? 
Here we go. Making that Twister look so easy again. So he's on pace here for another solid run. Oh, perfect. So clean. No pedals. Triple tail lift. <laughs> wow. This run's looking exactly the same and so perfect. See if he gets his Cork 720 again so he can stay straight on the Oh, line. smoother this time. Can he Lined get it? Up. Oh, the front clip. Oh, oh, perfect. Perfect. It's kid, man. So good. Nikolai Rigatkin. <laughs> the finish corral celebration that we love so much. This feels so much like last year. Such a fun kid to watch ride a bike. He always feeds off the energy. It's what we always say. And I got to believe that him watching Diego put down a run and hearing the crowd go up, you know, he wanted that feeling. He wanted to get a run. And oh. it's so crazy that he can do those tricks that he did up top in his first run again. The fact that these riders can deliver under such pressurizing circumstances, it's this crowd, I tell you, this crowd is behind these riders. We're gonna get noise complaints from the city of Innsbruck here pretty soon if riders keep dropping runs like this. Man, that run was pretty perfect, Cam. Notice how he didn't take many pedals, if any, between the jumps. Everything was on lock, landing at the perfect top of the landing. That right there, doing a cash roll, but taking the time to look back, do a reach around, it's called a ground chuck. Comes from BMX. It's actually usually just a trick on its own. It's not usually thrown in a cash roll, but that's Nikolai for you. Well, he's the only guy we've ever seen doing a cash roll with a behind the back seat grab. So is this. We saw him get a little offline off to the riders right on that last run. This time he landed perfectly in the middle and I knew he had something big for us on this last jump. Now he was working on this in practice, but he actually took a huge crash about 24 hours ago. When I saw him hit the ground, I was thinking, oh, is Nikolai going to be out? But never count this guy out. Such a competitor, always going for that top spot. <laughs> I think that is exactly what we wanted to see right oh, there. Oh, man. The judges are seated right beneath us here in this tower, and I do not envy their position. All right, the score coming in for Nikolai Regakin. Will it be enough? It is! Oh, a repeat from last year. He goes into the lead with a 93. There it is. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Nikolai always delivers. Oh, Michaela Gatto. Check in with Nikolai Regakin after he moved into the lead. Dude, that was freaking awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, after the first run, there was a lot of pressure to just get back to this last jump, but uh, I wanted to uh, do it for these fans. I mean, I gave them an insane one here last year and uh, just trying to get them stoked again. And yeah, the feeling coming through that berm is unbeatable. Uh, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the other guys having to drop. Today is going sick. Today it's going down for sure, man. Congrats. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Eli <laughs> Rogakin, you cannot script this. The fact that it happened once was insane, and now it happened again just a year later. A look there at Brett Reeder at the top. A very familiar feeling. So right now, looking at the scores, you got to wonder if Brett didn't slip pedals on that last landing oh. of his first run on the backflip opposite double tail. Would he be above Nikolai? That's what's going through his head right now. He's wondering, should I switch up my run? Should I just stick with the run and try to clean it up? So lots of decisions going on in Brett's mind right now. Well, Brett doesn't just need a couple points. He has an 86.75. He needs to better a 93. This guy loves pressure. He loves to be pushed. And he rose to the top last year. Can't wait to find out if he can do it again. But before we get to see Brett Reeder, of course, we have this rider right here, Lucas Knopf, the Kenda rider out of Germany. In his first Crankwork Slope style appearance, we had him in the halftime panel in Rotorua. He was talking about how all he wanted to do was make it to the top level, the Crankworks World Tour, and here he is. He stomped his run last time, but he left some room for improvement. This is his chance to show how he works so hard to get up here and that he deserves to be here. Oh, wow. how did he hold on to that? Similar to first run, over-rotating, but able to hold on. See if he can shake that off, clean up the rest of his run here. Double tail up, looking nice and smooth, coming into the next hip. Here we go, he's not coming up short this run like he did in the first attempt. Truck driver down the whale tail. One more chance to wow the judges. Oh, he got it! Tail whip to bar spin. That was a big move. I haven't seen him do that one yet. 
I don't even think he did that in practice. You saw him catching flip whips early, and you could see he was motioning, wanting to get that bar spin. So with the pressure on, Lucas Knopf out of Germany stomps his run. So Lucas's style, he's always trying to cram another bar spin in there. And you can see in that run, maybe he missed a bar spin or a tuck no hander or two. He almost threw it away right here at the top. Man, that was so close to being disastrous, but he's able to muscle through that. Thank you, front suspension. So that right there looked like he was going for a 360 tuck no hander to bar spin, but at least he didn't let it phase him. So right there, he's trying to get his hands off, but at least he didn't throw that whole jump away. It was able to get that bar spin, so it's still a truck driver. The presence of mind to mess up the variation, then still squeeze out a bar spin. So right here, backflip tail, he's got to get his feet perfectly oh, come on. on the pedals and spin those bars around. There's so many things that have to be in the perfect position to be able to get that bar spin in. That is commitment. I don't feel like he caught that early or was in the perfect body position. He just forced that bar spin to happen, and good thing. It's going to help his score for sure. Well, what will the score be for Lucas Knopf Proven that he has what it takes to be here on the Crankworks FNBA Slopestyle World Championship Series. Well, the score coming in for Lucas Knopf. He's going to improve. Moving into ninth place with a 73.75. So incredibly hard to get here, to become one of the top 14 in the world. And hopefully those points that Lucas Knopf just earned will bring him to the next stop of the tour. Well, that can only help his ranking, and I'm hoping we'll see him in Leger. We'll take a look at how many fans we have out here. I know you think you're a fan because you're watching at home, but they take it to the next level, showing up in person. But being a fan isn't easy. Here's some guidelines on how you be a Slopestyle fan. After 15 years of extensive worldwide testing, the following are scientifically recognized methods of showing support for your favorite rider. Air horn, Vuvuzela, novelty homemade signage, Instagram hashtag, cowbell thunderstick, screaming. However, studies have shown that fan nakedness has a detrimental effect on athlete performance. And that's why you need this. but you can't get it here, you have to look here. It's also available on site at the best mountain bike destinations on planet Earth. So go online, get yourself some Crankworx World Tour merchandise provided by Fox, and hopefully buy a plane ticket, come to one of these events at some point. Well, take a look back at the start tower Jakob Wenzel, after clawing his way back onto the tour, dropped a first run with a little bit of room for improvement. And if anybody can do it, he's the man. This guy never gives up. Jakob's been on the scene for a while. He's been on tour, he's been off tour, and now he's back on and he wants to stay on. We saw him pull out of speed and style to focus on slope style. So that shows how bad he wants it because he's one of the best in the world at speed and style. And he's opting out to get his chance right here to take his second run. Great works, Innsbruck, slope style. The dual speed and style world champion from last year. But yeah, just shows how much he cares about slope style. Couple case landings and run number one, so a bit of room for improvement. Let's see what he's got. Looking smooth so far, coming into the cannon. Backflip there, switching his feet for this double tail up right here. Oh. Going back to left foot forward, getting that 720. Speed was a little slow, but able to recover. 360 downside tail up in, feet back on the pedals. Backflip, double X up, down. What does he have for us on the last jump? Just under rotating, coming up a little bit short on that cash roll right there, but that run was looking so good. So he's got to be a little bit disappointed. That was his last chance, but still proving that he has what it takes to be on this tour. Well, Jakob Wenzel, a guy who never gives up. He fell off the tour, but he did not give up. 
Now he had some problems in this run, but he never gave up. He kept on pushing through, trying a huge trick on that last jump with that cash roll. The fans love him. They know him from dual speed and style. Now I'm hoping we'll see him not only back in slope style, but we want to see him back in dual speed and style as well. The 2017 dual speed and style world champion. Still proving that he has what it takes to be out here though. He's just got to clean it up a little bit, but we know his tricks are there. Well, Ryan Nyquist had a fantastic first run, but he's currently sitting in 12th place, only ahead of two other riders. That 71 looked good at the time, but the level just continued to increase. But this guy is such a veteran competitor. If anybody knows how to increase his score, Ryan Nyquist is the dude for the job. Safe to say he's been having more fun than everyone all day, but now it's game time. Time to be serious and stomp this run. Truck driver off the cannon, landing perfectly at the top there. 720 there we go. on that hip. 360 one-handed X up, so pretty similar to run number one here. Whoa. 720 into that skinny whale tail. Got the truck driver down. And he's Come on, throw those bars! Keep bars! Oh, oh, no. No. Exploding oh. upon impact. Ryan Nyquist knowing that a fantastic first run was only good enough for 12th place. He had to throw the biggest trick in his repertoire. That 720 bar spin. Almost. He also had a couple other elements that he improved as well. Almost, buddy. He did, and I can't reiterate amazing, enough amazing. how scary it is to do a 720 into that whale tail. I can't even do a 720, but if I could, I wouldn't want to do it there. That thing's skinny, there's no room for air. To see him get that twice. So here we go, a replay. We're gonna savor some of the moments of brilliance from this run right here. Unfortunately, we know how it ended, but tricking all the difficult features, a truck driver off of that cannon, and the 720 on the hip, we're not seeing that a ton. We have seen it a couple times so far, but that's a classic Ryan Nyquist move right there, that 360 one-handed X up. But for me, it was all about the 720 into that whale tail. So that 720 there, he had to over-rotate on purpose, which is such a tricky thing to think about while you're spinning around twice. And this one, the one into the whale tail, look how he lands perfectly in the center. Now this one, he needed all the speed he could get. He knew he was going a little bit too slow, but he chucked it anyways. He says, this is my last chance. Oh, going for it. his hand actually blew off right when his rear tire touched the ground. Otherwise, he may have been able to muscle through that one. But so much impact if you don't catch perfect transition on that landing. So we know it's not going to improve because he didn't stomp the final feature, only a 37.5. Ryan Nyquist stays in 12th place. And we'll be looking forward to seeing him next week in Leger. Well, next rider to drop. Anthony Missouri, the youngest rider to ever win a Crankbrook Slope style top. Now he's looking to get back on that podium. He had a great first run. That's one of the biggest moves we've seen in the competition with so much style. Getting that cash roll perfectly clean again. Oh! The tail of such a risky move off that. Landing squarely, but he's back on track. Front flip, tuck no hander on the next hip. Struggling for speed a bit here. All right, he's looking good coming into the last jump. Oh, same trick as what he used to finish his run in run number one. Anthony Missouri holding on to that one. Now pretty similar to run number one. Will it be enough to move him out of that current 10th place spot? So you watch when these guys get a little bit offline. This course flows perfectly if you land in the center of everything, right at the top. If you're a little offline, it throws your speed off, forcing you to pedal, and you're just trying to get back on track the whole time. Get back up to that flow, find your speed, find your rhythm. He was able to get back into it, but I can't help but think he wanted a little bit more on that last jump. Look at that right there, having to tuck his head the side of his front tire so he doesn't buzz his visor. But look at that, coming up about a half a bike length too short. It slows you down, so it takes persistence to keep the run rolling after a blunder like that. But Anthony Missouri, never a guy to give up. 
Whoa, he actually threw that second bar spin, not holding on with his guide hand the entire time. Backflip double bar spin, still a great trick, but knowing Anthony, I had to think he wanted a little bit more out of that. It's crazy to see him trying that cash roll on the final jump in practice and crashing, but then deciding, you know what, I'll do it on the second jump instead, the longest jump on the course. So Anthony Missouri looking to better his score in order to move out of that 10th place position. He's currently sitting with a 73. We had that interview with Anthony Missouri earlier talking about how hard it is to balance throwing a banger run and risking a ton or stomping something and staying on tour. So he improves by just a quarter of a point, 73.25. He would have needed 0.5 more in order to tie the next rider ahead of him in the ranking. So he'll stay in 10th place. And we'll be looking forward to seeing him next week in Leger. Now, if you can see that flag at the top of the screen right there, it's definitely moving a little bit more than it was at the first run. So we're seeing a lot of riders have trouble. It may have something to do with that wind. This next rider in the gate, Simon Godzik out of Poland, is a rider who does tricks that are very difficult to do in the wind. He's known for his Superman extended tricks, the variations that are more, less common in the world of slope style, trying to be unique and earn podium spots that way. What's he got for us today? Starting out with a flat flip, one foot again. Oh, he does not care about the wind. Proving that the wind is not in the back of his head. Doing it to Superman anyways, which makes you so susceptible Got it. to blown around. Looking clean so far. Coming up a little short there maybe, but we'll see if he's back on track. Oh, come on, distance. Cork 720. Maybe the wind's starting to hold these riders up a little bit. Yes. Somehow able to sneak oh, in that come on. tail up. What's it going to be? The final jump. Front flip tail up. He had to throw it away. Oh. Oh, that was such a good run. It's the trick we saw him try on that last jump last year. He wanted to stick it so close, but man, that Superman up top in the wind, it's gotta be my favorite part. Look at this, look at the extension. The bike is vertical, the legs are perfectly horizontal. The most difficult time of the day to do that trick, but he does not care. Now we heard him in his interview with Michaela after his first run saying that he had a lot more he wanted to do. He wanted to add the bar spin on that flip on the cannon log. Now Nikolai Rogakin is sitting in the top spot and he did that same trick that Simon was trying right there. So you know if he would have landed it considering everything he did earlier on the course, that really would have shaken up the standings. Unfortunately, a crash means a score of 43 for Simon Godziak, putting him into eighth place. Let's take a look at what our current leaderboard looks like at the moment. Holding down that top spot is Nikolai Rogatkin. Brett Reeder still sitting in second. This feels a lot like last year, doesn't it? Diego Caverzazi sitting in third. Feels a lot like stop number one of the 2018 season. But we're just crossing our fingers here, hoping to see Brett Reeder at the end of the event drop another hammer to unseat this man right here, Nikolai Rogatkin. Last year was the best event we've ever seen. Let's see if history repeats itself. Don't go away. Well, we're in the middle of second runs here.
the beautiful Austrian Alps, outside the beautiful city of Innsbruck, the place where we saw a ridiculous showdown in 2017 between Nikolai Rogakin and Brett Reeder. Things are shaping up to be very similar to last year, but of course we still have some more riders left to go. Matt Jones sitting in good position right now, but being bumped down by a lot of other athletes. He was in podium position for a long time, but now currently sitting in fifth. We're looking forward to him. And of course, we're looking forward to seeing Brett Reeder, who made history earlier on in run number one, stomping that new trick off the start tower. But before we get to them, it's all about this man right here, Francis Thomas Lemoyne. He's sitting in a good position here, but you know he has more in the tank. He's going for that King of Crankworks overall. So he's in six right now, which gives him a lot of points, but he's going to try to get more. And it's not just about the King of Crankworks. It's about the FMB World Tour, and so he's going to try to step it up right now. Ooh, bigger extension on the tuck no hander there on that variation. The backflip tuck no hander to bar spin. 360 tuck no hander, perfectly smooth. No pedals into this next jump. Ooh, missing the bar spin on that 360 variation. Opposite 360 tuck no hander. Cleaning that one up though, much more style than in run one. Ooh, adding a no hander to the front flip into the whale tail. Wow, double truck driver out. What do you what did you have on the last jump? Oh, back to double tail and perfect oh to the pedals. That is the trick he used last year to land on third place run. Thomas Lemoyne, will he be on yet another podium here in Innsbruck? Proving he always has more in the tank. He may have missed a bar spin, but he added more to that run. He got a double tail up out of the last jump. Landing switch footed again, but not missing the pedals. Able to recover, clean it up, not touch his feet to the ground. Getting all the points that he could out of that flip double whip. Look at that, Nikolai Rigatkin, always the first to congratulate a fellow competitor on stomping their run. It's all about executing your goals out here and leave it to the judges to determine what place that results in. Lemoyne always so smooth and about two feet higher than everybody else. He's a big rider, he carries so much speed, but he's so fluid with his big size, able to use it to his advantage. So now much style in his tricks as well. That's an opposite trick for him, spinning his unnatural direction, but able to still make it look good. It doesn't look awkward, even though it might feel awkward because it's not his natural direction. It's easy to forget how big these jumps are when you watch riders like Thomas Lemoyne make them look so easy, but those hips, nine meters in distance, around 30 feet. So that trick right there was one of my favorites. One of the spots that he stepped it up in that run was taking his hands off on the front flip into the whale tail. But here, this is the trick that put him on the podium last year. Backflip, double tail up. So he added another bike rotation in there. Feet on the pedals. He's usually right foot forward. His pedals spun. <laughs> didn't phase him, able to get him on, stomp it perfect to the ground. And how can we possibly express to the people how much presence of mind you need to be able to catch your feet in the opposite stance if you're in the middle of a trick so technical as a backflip double tail whip? Muscle memory wants to revert to your natural foot direction. So being able to have the presence of mind to switch that, recover, so much experience. Well, what will the score be? Where will it put him in the rankings? Oh, it looks like it's an 83, just off the podium, but a valuable fourth place for so many reasons. The King of Crankworx overall title, plus the Crankworx FMBA Slopestyle World Championships overall series. Oh, look who we have. Matt Jones, so excited to see him back on the Crankworx tour here. He had a solid first run, but he has more in the tank. So he was riding so smooth in the first run. Now, if you aren't familiar with this guy and you only saw his first run, you must think that he's just a flawless rider, but it's been a long and difficult road to get here. He's had a lot of trials and tribulations on the Crankworx World Tour. Um, last year, so 2017 season, I was in for the full Crankworx Tour. Rotorua started off real, a real treat. I broke my wrist the day before finals and then was kind of scrambling to get fit, to get healthy, to come back for Leger, which was the second stop. I rode that first run, did like probably the best run I've ever done, top to bottom, and then was like probably two miles an hour too fast for the last jump. It was like a game of inches. I overshot a double flip, exploded. Second run blew my tire. And then the following week, we're here in Innsbruck, the exact same story happened. Double backflip on the last jump, cased it this time, second run blew my tire. So it was like the most insane series of events, just a consistent mess up from my half. And it cost me a lot of points. 
and then Whistler I was in for that I took it really steady did a safe run got top 10 and that's kind of been my, my benchmark of points to then build on for this year so that was kind of a, a strategy that's kind of allowed me to be back but you do have to be kind of in it for the win here get maximum points at one event two events so there isn't really room for like taking it super steady consistency is key but you do have to be like be a winner to be on this tour it's 12 riders right that's nothing There's a look back at how difficult of a season Matt Jones had last year. Now Steady, Steady gets you an invitation back, but it does not get you a podium. It's crazy that we're calling his first run Steady because it had so many huge bangers. But you just saw that highlight reel, the tricks that he's capable of that he was trying last year when he kept blowing out tires, over-rotating, under-rotating, coming up short. You gotta think right now, with that flag becoming a little bit calmer and having a great first run in the bag, this guy is going to dump it out here in his second run. These riders have such a fine line to walk playing the game of should I just try to get points, stay on tour, or should I go for the win? He has one solid run in the bag, so he has room to step it up here. So much style, landing smooth, reminiscent of his first run. Backflip, tuck no hander on the cannon there again. Look at the way he takes no pedals, goes so high, full extension on the 360 tuck no hander right there. Get it? Oh! 720 over. Oh! Over rotating, just putting him a little bit offline. <laughs> Still air in his tires, but landing offline, not able to sink up to that whale tail. He will stick with fifth place here in Innsbruck, but the crowd loving it. They know his story, they know how far he's come. But another thing they know, they know what happened last year between Nikolai Ragakin and Brett Reeder. Nikolai Ragakin currently sitting in the hot seat with a score of 93. But that man right there, Brett Reeder, this is his turn to answer. And he has what it takes. He did something in his first run that nobody's ever done in the history of this sport. What does he have to beat? This is Nikolai Ragakin's first run. Huge tricks all the way down. We're looking at a triple tail up right now on a hip. A new one for the 2018 season, the cash roll seat grab, the ground chuck, and then branching out, different tricks. A one-handed Superman seat grab. Now this is the trick he's been working on on his airbag setup in his backyard. The Cork 720 off the step down. But here was the nail in the coffin that put him in the hot seat. The front flip, tail whip, perfect to pedals. And then of course, a victory celebration in the finish burn. Boom! Any day you get to see Nikolai do his victory dance is a good day. It's a treat to watch this kid ride. If he does that dance, you know he's happy and that he got his run, and his runs are nothing short of insane. Well, he's such a positive force out here, always pulling for his fellow competitors. Of course, Nikolai Ragakin wants to stay with that number one alongside his name, but Brett Reeder, would do virtually anything to swoop the rug out from under Nikolai Ragakin. Brett's never been one to be happy in second place. We rarely see him have to pull out his reserves. He made a couple little mistakes in his first run. So we'll see if he's gonna change up his trick choice here, or if he's gonna stick with it and just try to clean it up. Will we see that backflip tail up again? Oh! We will. Stomped it. Oh, he missed the bar spin on that front flip. Will he carry on? Oh, okay, good. He's still going. A back foot bar spin on the cannon. Still capable of so oh. much here. No, he's going to wave this one off. Oh, I would have loved to have seen, even without the bar spin on that front flip, if he cleaned up that back flip, opposite double tail up at the bottom, if it would have been enough. Who knows how many points they deducted for him slipping pedals on that. We will never know. Brett wants to get the run that he has in mind. If anything isn't going perfect, he says, you know what, I'll get it next time. I'm in second place. Well, he's, he's walking away from this healthy. He's got another event coming up next week. There we have it. You know what that means. It means for the second year in a row, Nikolai Ragakin will take the gold medal here in the Crankworks Innsbruck Slope Style presented by Kenda. But great to see the sportsmanship between these two riders at the top of their game.
Michaela is down in the finish line berm with our first and second place riders, Brett Reeder and Nikolai Regakin. Michaela? All right, Miles excuse ahead. me, excuse me, uh, sir. Oh, Brett. Oh, okay, Brett's oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What happened? I think they were just really friends? excited. Oh, here they are. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay, so congratulations on winning thank again. You, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, my question to both of you, actually, is what is more nerve-wracking, you sitting in the start gate or Brett sitting in the start gate waiting to see what he pulls? I, I Honestly, it's, uh, it's a tough question. I mean, it's always a game of suspense with slope style, especially in an event like this when uh, either of us can take it. And there's just so much risk in the run that, you know, anything can happen. So uh, it's nerve-wracking either way. But, uh, I mean, once the run is done, uh, you don't really care. Like, if, if you're first, if you're second, I mean, you obviously, you obviously care. But uh, the hardest part of the day is done. I mean, you've done your run. You're, you're not injured or anything. So, uh, yeah, the pressure, the pressure is there. The, it's always nerve-wracking. But, uh, yeah, honestly, sitting in that start gate before the run is, uh, is where all the pressure is. When the run is over, there's a uh, big relief off the shoulders. Well, you did it. Congratulations. Super stoked for you. Slope style winner, Nikolai Regakin. Massive congratulations to Nikolai Regakin for doing it again here for the second year in a row. Of course, we talk about first and second place so much, but we got to give it up to Diego Caverzasi, going back to back third places so far in the first two stops of this series. Now, Thomas Janon, fourth place, a position he's very familiar with. The guy's won it. He's had all the spots on the podium. A fourth place again for him. And Thomas Lemoyne wrapping up the top five. But Eric Fedko, I mean, this guy's already in the top six, and he had more in the tank. He had to go a little bit more cautious in the second run. This really hints at what we may see next week in Leger. So second event of the season. This is where consistency really plays its part when you see those standings right there. Well, the crowd here in Innsbruck, Austria, treated to another world-class show provided by the best riders in the world. And next week, we're going to have stop number three in Leger. Check it out. This place has attracted the best mountain bike riders in the world. 90 kilometers of bike trails here in the Port de Soleil region. The crowd is going wild out there. Nobody has any room for air here. One last features, features, features. Cork 724, oh! pretty it. What a huge run. We could have a new leader here. It's so awesome though. It's like one of the funnest tracks I've ever ridden. Ever. It's looking good. She's gonna take it. Yes, here you go, Mr. Oh, just barely too short. Dude, it doesn't get much better than that. So if you live close to Leger, hop in your car, show up in person, bring your Vuvuzela, clang some bike parts together. If you're hanging out at home and you can't make to Leger, make sure you do exactly what you're doing right now. Log in, watch it online, because if this show we were just privileged to is any indication, next week is going to be off the hook. You got to think having a back-to-back -to -back too. The riders that are disappointed with their performance here are going to want to deliver in Leger. The riders who delivered here are going to want to deliver in Leger. So those that had a good result have the confidence. Those that didn't have a good result have the fire. And that's what we're going to see in Leger. It's true. It's fresh in their mind. And luckily, a lot of riders are able to pull through this week without injury. We had a couple crashes where the medics tended to the riders. But most of the people are going to be healthy for next week. And that's always the most important part. Well, one of the rules we live by, whether you're a rider here in these competitions or you're doing what we're doing, commentating the live webcast, we just say, don't read the comments because you might see something that you don't like. But of course, our crew here at Boombox sifts through the comments for us and they find some of the more hilarious ones. Well, right now, a comment from this event, Fat Finger says, damn, history repeats itself and so, so true, except Brett Reeder not landing his run. That would have been a full repeat of last year. But you know what? When they're on the edge right there, anything can happen. So we always appreciate the viewers logging on to Pink Bike. Tell us if you like it. Tell us if you didn't like it. Just say whatever you're thinking. Hey, if you're Calvin Huth, make a vlog. We may even feature you on the webcast. 
but we love our fans out here and we can't wait to meet a whole new group of fans live and in person only a week from now in Leger, France. And here's how things shook down today, looking at our top eight. The top two, same as last year. Third place, same as stop number one this year, but a couple fresh faces there. Eric Fedko in fifth place. Now Matt Jones getting a great result. Hopefully he can carry that momentum into next week. Simon Godziak holding things down in eighth place. Now Alex Alonko on his first performance in a Crankworks event, bringing up the rear right there, but showing he has a ton of potential. And we're looking forward to the next time we see him. Ryan Nyquist, a little bit of ground to make up next week in France. Well, we're getting things set for the podium, but before we do that, we're gonna start something new. We're calling this McCall's Call. This is virtually some honorable mentions, and right now, somebody we have to give an honorable mention to, McCall's Call number one, goes to Matt Jones. Tyler, your thoughts on his performance out here today? He's always had what it takes. He's had some ups and downs, bad luck with crashing on the last jump after such amazing runs. So he played it smart here, smooth. You could see him smiling while he was riding. Such huge extension on everything that he does. Look at that, that was what you're talking about. He looked over at the crowd, midway while he's backwards with both hands off the handlebars. This kid also put so much time in off the contest circuit doing video parts, which takes up a lot of time. It's hard to train while you're doing that. So this kid's oh, so busy, but still able to deliver. And it just looks fun when he's riding the bike. That's why, you know, that's why we gotta pick this kid. Well, big congrats to Matt Jones. The extension on that backflip Superman, spot on. Well, moving things right along. Michaela's trying to, to track down the man of the hour, Nikolai Rogakin, but until she gets her hands on him, oh, she was able to pull it off. Well, she's got the third place finisher out here, the guy who's got two third places to his name so far. I'm talking about Italian Diego Caverzasi. Michaela? Thanks, Cam. Diego, this is actually, you got third in Rotorua, third in Afis, yeah. and third today. Yeah. What about next week? What's going on? Uh, I hope second, or first, maybe. <laughs> Looking to improve. Do you have any more of those Instagram fresh tricks to pull out in uh, Leger? Uh, well, maybe, yes. I got some new tricks. Uh, what I wanted to do it here, but because of the first crash in the first run, I couldn't get my second run as I want. So maybe next week I will do something more, yeah. So are you saying that third place run was a tiny bit conservative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mixed it up my first plan and second uh, to get a good run and good score, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> we can't wait to see what you do in Leger. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Thanks. Diego, making Evo proud. You see his buddy out there. The guy who encourages him with criticism. It's a really funny situation. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the Torquato Testa episode of McCall Meets. Evo, the gray-haired, muscly gentleman you see running around alongside the course. A big congrats to Diego Caverzasi. Can't wait to see if he can get either a second or a first next week in Leger. Well, we know he'll be coming in with a lot of confidence. Third place in Rotorua. Now he's no, he knows it wasn't a fluke. He knows he's a multiple time podium finisher at Crankworks. And he's got another one just a week away. He was the guy that we were always talking about as the underdog, the privateer, the guy who didn't have any sponsors. This year he's pulled down some out of the industry sponsors. He has, like you heard Calvin Huth saying, a zipper sponsor, <laughs> a wine sponsor, doing whatever it takes to make it happen, live the dream. He spends half of his time working at a bike shop in Switzerland, but the rest of his time he spends practicing for tricks like this. There we go, after a huge crash last year on the backflip tail up on that same jump, he ups the ante doing a backflip bar spin to tail whip, proving that he's not scared. And then you saw him do that cash roll and then you heard him talking about how he wanted to add a tabletop to that cash roll. Top riders out here never being content with what they can stomp. Always thinking about the next bigger, better trick. And you know, with a week in between, Diego's gonna spend all his time just crafting another run. He knows the course in Leger, and he's the guy who always writes down his ideal dream run on his notepad. He hands it to the judges, asks them what they think. He definitely knows what the formula is here for doing well. Well, it's finally that time for the podium. Let's take a look at the champagne stairs.
So we got Diego, second time on the podium here, so happy. After watching that run, it's insane to hear that he had more in the tank. He called that a conservative run, but look at him, he's on the podium, he's got more in the tank, and I hope that he unleashes it in Leger. Diego Cavarzasi, all smiles here in Innsbruck. The season of his career right now. The podium's a good look on Diego, and I think we're gonna see him up there a lot more in the future. Collecting those novelty checks this season. Confidence goes a long way in this sport, and I know I keep saying it, but man, he's gotta be full of it right now. Well, Brett Reeder, you saw the sportsmanship. When he wasn't able to stop his run, he congratulated Nikolai Ragakin. You know, this guy may not have won today, but he made history doing that backflip tail up off the flat drop. There's no lip, no kicker, no transition to initiate that rotation. And in order to rotate fast enough to do a tail up while you're doing a backflip, you have to be Brett Reeder. It's why you never say never in slope style. 10 years ago, you might have said, no one will ever do a backflip tail up off of a flat drop. Backflip tail up was a, the best trick you'd see on a dirt jump. And now he's bringing it to the hardest feature on a slope style course. Proving that you just never know what's gonna happen next in this sport. But Brett, always leading the charge. And this guy right here, Nikolai Rogotkin, delivering two-time Innsbruck slope style champion. <laughs> you know, you watch Nikolai ride Joyride, that has been his Achilles heel. There's something about the course there that makes it so he just has a hard time putting together a run. Now, if that's a difficult course for him, this one has to be considered a dream course for him. The only two times we've ever had a competition here, he's taken home top prizes. Nikolai Rogotkin standing exactly where he wants to stand. Such a well-deserved win for him right here. Brett didn't make it easy on him, and he didn't make it easy on Brett. But in the end of the day, Nikolai standing back on top. Oh, the champagne tastes so sweet, mixed with the sweat and body odor of a competition uniform. But no champagne is sweeter than the champagne sprayed at Red Bull Joyride in Whistler, British Columbia. The capacity crowd is just filling in. Backflip, double tail up on the step up. You gotta log on to crankworks.com slash whistler slash m slash VIP. Book your pass, get the best seats, and take it all in the best way possible. We're working on getting Nikolai Ragakin over to the booth to talk with Tyler and I, but before we do that, let's take a look at a groundbreaking run, a run good enough for second place here in Innsbruck, the first run from Brett Reeder. So this right here is what we talk about as a world's first, backflip tail up off a flat drop. He also is throwing in opposite cork 720s mixed with regular cork 720s. It's not just the tricks that he does, of course it's the way he does them, but the way he composes a run. There's genius balance in his runs. When he does the flat drop backflip tail on the top jump, you know he's gonna have something further down to complement it. And in this case, what was it, Tyler? This was also something we've never seen in the slope style competition before. Backflip, opposite, double tail whip. So we saw him do it clean in practice, just slipping the pedals there. And you gotta wonder how many points the judges deducted from that. We hear that a pedal slip can be up to 10 points, depending on the degree of the pedal slip. So. Well, if that was the case, he had an 86.75. If he had 10 more points, he would have had a 96.75, which definitely would have beat the 93 of Nikolai Rogakin. But unfortunately, the world will never know. But fortunately, we only have a week to wait until we see these guys square up against each other again. Oh, look at this. Well, you can't see right now because the camera's not 
shown us, but a very stinky gentleman just showed up to give us high fives. The man of the hour, Nikolai Regakin, champagne in hand. Man, you smell good, buddy. No, brother! <laughs> good job. So psyched for you. Congrats, dude. Am I supposed to talk into this? I guess, right? Yeah, talk into that. Okay. Look at that. Just have yourself a time. You will earn the right to enjoy yourself right now. Nikolai, I was hanging out with you outside of Boston just, I don't know, a month ago or something. Yeah. You were working on Cork 720s on your step down, a very, very well-built step down, <laughs> not rickety at all, into your airbag. And we saw you today right before the competition stomp that. And you said when I was there, you were already mentally on the start tower in Innsbruck. Did everything go your way today or what? Um, it didn't go as perfectly as I thought. I mean, crashing on the last feature as both of you may know is the worst thing ever because in your second run you have to do your entire run just to get back to that same feature you crashed on but uh yeah made it happen and yeah like you said the the corky was uh deep in my mind and uh yeah made made that one happen super scary one but uh, it worked out so I'm, i i couldn't be more stoked well first run you landed a little bit to the side of the landing on the cork 720 on the step down how did you iron it out because you need all the speed you could get to get your last trick off the final jump um, I honestly think that uh, I was thinking possibly too much about my last trick in the middle of that cork seven because I knew I had to land pretty perfect. So in the second run, I kind of focused more on just getting that corky dialed, landing good, and then just cranking my way into that last jump. And uh, the front flip tail whip was actually planned all along. And when I landed a bit weird on the uh, on the cork seven, I just went through a few tricks in my head in that little flat bottom and just what? went for a cash roll bar and uh, that didn't work out. So I was definitely uh, kicking myself for, for making that little change, but uh, it worked out in the end, so no complaints. So can we talk about the trick that you chose to do into the whale tail? You knew you were gonna do the cork 720 out, but you didn't choose an easy trick. It's a little windy out here. You chose to hold the seat with one hand and hang off the back with the rest of your body. Tell us about that trick choice into that cork 720. Yeah, the Superman Sea Crab one hand into the whale tail is, uh, is one that I was super stoked on just because it's super unique. I mean, it's honestly a trick I've been doing since the BMX days, so I feel pretty comfortable with it. But like you said, with, with the wind factoring in, with the fact that I have to cork seven pretty much right after catching those bars, which are getting blown around in the wind, it wasn't, the, uh, it wasn't maybe the smartest trick choice, but uh, I was stoked to get that one done. Not, I, I don't think it was as good of an extension as I could have had it, but... Uh, but yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta try to be unique out here. I mean, all these guys are just here. throwing down hammers constantly. So you just gotta try to, you know, distance yourself from the crowd and uh, do things that other guys aren't. And I think the Superman seat one hand was, uh, was one of those things. Exactly. I admire the fact that you didn't just choose to do a bar spin in there. <laughs> and that may have stepped your points up even higher in the judge's mind that you do something so risky into, obviously, one of the biggest things in your run. <laughs> Here's what I'm curious about. The people at home, they only see the two runs that you do in the competition. They don't see all the work you do in practice to get ready for the competition. Take a look at the monitor. Yesterday, you were going for that front flip tail up, and you had a pretty big crash. At any point, did it discourage you for trying it in your run? See, this is the one you rode away from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the fact that those, I think the fact that those front flip whips in yesterday's practice, uh, the fact that they didn't go perfectly uh, made me a bit nervous in that first run, which is maybe why I switched my trick level up, but uh, it also made me super focused in that second run, knowing that I had to, you know, give all the force I had to get that around. So, you know, sometimes you just want to huck things in your run, but sometimes those couple attempts in practice, even when they go wrong, they help tremendously on the, on the day of the finals. So uh, and what just a day uh, ride was, and learn, I guess. Man. Yeah, epic day. Right here, and you know what? I don't know if you've heard, but you have to rinse and repeat just a week from now. You know there's another event in Leger next week, right? Well, yeah, I, honestly, I, I feel like if that second run hadn't gone uh, my way, I'd be pretty nervous to get that redemption in, uh, in Leger. But uh, now it's a bit of pressure off the shoulders and give me a week to, uh, to you know, relax and, and get ready for that, uh, for that. I mean, not really relax, but uh, get ready for next weekend. This is your course right here. We've only had the competition two years, and you've won both of them. If this is your course, then in the spectrum of courses you dislike and courses you like, where does Leger sit? Um, I mean, this course is, I think all the riders can agree that it's an epic one. I mean, Rotorua is super hard to beat. That's an epic course, but we come here and it's it's just so floaty and, and well-built. And I mean, you see the guys just doing doing crazy stuff in, in all their runs. Um, but Leger, I mean, it's they, they changed that course up a lot over the years. And I think some more changes are 
are coming this year. I, I don't know, uh, but um, nobody knows until we get nobody there. Nobody knows right? until we get there. But uh, yeah, Leger is uh, is a course that I I haven't been able to to conquer yet um, in terms of a result. So uh, yeah, gonna try to do that next weekend. But I mean, all these Crankworks courses, we can't complain about them. I mean, they're so massively built, and these guys put so much work in to potentially have the riders come and tell them they need to change everything. So huge pressure on them. And uh, yeah, big ups for, for building these courses for us to, to throw down our gnarliest stuff on. Well, you won the event today. And not only did you do that, you earned some really valuable points for the Crankworx FNBA Slope Style World Championship overall. So we'll be pulling for you, buddy. We're gonna hope you keep up tallying those points and on that quest for that World Championship title at the end. And for those of you at home, of course, Tune into Leger to watch him, but tune in tomorrow for the downhill race. It's going to look like this. Check it out. Bust out the champagne. DH season is in full swing. Gorgeous technical machines to ogle. Gutsy race strategies to ponder. But public enemy number one is still the clock. Danny Hart is back. Can the 2017 Crankworks Innsbruck winner make it two in a row here in Innsbruck? 2017 overall Crankworks champ Tracy Hanna is also here, and she's on the hunt. She won in Austria last year and is looking to do more of the same in 2018. Back-to-back -back weekends of live downhill action starts here on the rough and raw tracks at Gotsons. Round two of the Crankworks World Tour. The IXS Innsbruck Downhill, presented by Raffaisen Club, is gonna be lit. Tune in on crankworks.com. So don't miss that. If you're a mountain bike fan, a mountain bike rider, you probably loved watching today's slope style, but you gotta watch the downhill race. There's nothing more pure than just a bunch of riders racing against the clock, roots, rocks. It's gonna be a good one. But speaking of a good one, this competition today, a doozy. Tyler, final thoughts. Final thoughts were Innsbruck delivers again. Nikolai's standing back where he wants to be. I wanna see him carry that momentum into Leger. I wanna see the riders that had mistakes here, carry it over to Leger, use it as fire. And uh, I think we're, we're set for another really good show in just a week. Well, back-to-back -back Crankworks World Tour events. It only happens once a year between Innsbruck and Leger. We know you enjoyed the event today. We know you're going to love the downhill tomorrow. And if you got a brain inside your head, you're going to log in next week to see if Nikolai Ragakin can do it again or if Brett Reeder will be in for redemption. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.